Hey, pre-notification gang. Of course I've seen it, Aaron. It's one of my favorites. I do love the wacky stuff. The adult swim surrealism. Hey, Rip. Coming along, great man. It, you're, I saw you post that right before I went live, Gory. It's, you're making a big deal out of nothing. You sent me a message, I saw it, and I responded to it. Thanks to Tier 1 Tallulah. No, I understand, Gory. I'm not mad or anything. I'm just saying, I saw you post that before. It's, it's really like a non-issue. How sweet, Jello. Thanks to the Prime, Farmer John, and Doc Rob, and the five gift subs, Kudo Kun. Thanks to the Tier 1 Primitive. Dion and the Prime Senior Slender and resub Cody Keen and gifts up Mr. Penguin and resub Titties. And thanks to the Tier 1 Not Willow. The Destiny 2 raid went great. Uh, we finished in the top five. It couldn't have gone better, I would say. Thanks to the Prime Spuds and the Bits Amatory and the Resub Toxic Pink. Yep, we'll be watching Punch Down tonight. Thanks to some tomato soup and the bits tray. I won't do that tray. Then yeah, probably selfish. Thanks to the bits Vifi and the prime hunk. I have seen that website actually, Pickles. Thanks to the prime supreme evil. And resub Jumbo and Hero. And the anonymous hundred bits. D and D's every Monday, nine p.m. EST. Thanks for the five gift subs, Huffler. You just reminded me of something though, so give me one sec. Okay, there we go. Thanks to Tier One Jad and the Prime Sagnum. Appreciate it, Huffler. Did you see TCG Con is in Tampa? No. What is that? Thanks to the Prime, not Boleen, and the resub, Chill. And the three gift subs, Jonah. Hey, Jonah. Thank you, the five gift subs, Hashbot. Thanks a big drop. <sighs> Joaquin Buckley's crazy UFC KO. Well, I don't think it's going to be that crazy, but sure. And very with a victory is killing white in a minute. Yeah, watch their knees. Close them. I don't feel like watching the whole fight. Yeah, having a former champion. So even on total strikes at the moment. 
That was crazy. All right. Thanks to Tier 1 Grand Worm and the Prime Fat Raccoon and Risa Brian. And the Bits Crow. It was a pretty good kick. Not a whole lot there. It's just... It's just... It's a pretty good kick. Thanks to the Risa Didact and Chrono. And the Tier 1 Nim. I just haven't felt like doing Cinder's Mod in a little while. There is a single new to catch a predator thing out and it's five minutes. I think it's called the uh, headbanger or something. Thanks to resub. Tab talk soul and gift sub Bobby and prime necro and sour. Show the milk. I don't know what that means, but all right, fuck yeah. Thanks to the gift sub Noah and resub Emperor Milk and Bear Sized Ant. What are you talking about, baby gravy? Thanks to resub Sparky. Oh yeah, we slapped the raid around. It was too easy, I'd say. Wish they had made it harder. Thanks to resub Sat Satiro. I have not seen Mark Rober's newest vid if he posted one in the last week or so. <sighs> yeah, of course I don't post him. I've seen a lot of his draining. Not a lot. I mean, I've seen like three. Thanks to resub side ache. Captain Andy's special dish, huh? Thanks to the resub coal. Hmm. Probably won't watch it on stream toast. Thanks to the tier one suspicious substance. Thanks to the resub dingus. Next to the resub perpetually anemic. And Isildir Isildur Jesus. Isildurius. There we go. There's the prime Monty Python. And the resub Bat Romney. Bat Romy. Darman's a goddamn hero. Hey, Gothic. Thanks for the bits. And thanks for the gifts of Crunchy Chris. I'll give this a try. Maybe it's a good fish dish. Leslie introduced us to the captains from Deadliest Catch. And now we're headed into the kitchen at City Crab Restaurant in New York, where Captain Andy is whipping up one of those special dishes that he makes out on the boat for the guys. Let's go. Fuck yeah. This looks intense. Today we're going to make halibut aliesca. It's a little dish that we came up with on the boat. It's fast, it's easy, and it tastes dangerous. Some, some, halibut, some fresh shredded pepper jack cheese, some fresh shredded parmesan. Takes a little bit of mayonnaise, a little bit of salt and pepper, and you're in. Now, is this uh, just like being on the boat? I mean, we don't have a lot of room here. Well, this is it's underwhelming. Boat, stuff be sliding around, get cooking. So all you do is you take a hot pan right there, 
and you grab some butter, so then you grab the halibut. Oh, that's a beautiful piece of fish. I did not catch this one, yeah, actually. Yeah, we were playing it the other day, actually, I think Toast. I'm gonna call this guy Joseph, though. So you have to get it in there. You can already smell it cooking. You turn it over. Are you always the chef on boat? We all I mean, this is as uh, simple as it gets, really. I could do this. Too. Normally, I have a cake pan, but today we're using this. You grab a little bit of mayonnaise. Can't watch street beef. Takes the good soup roughly. So we spread the mayonnaise on the bottom. And you grab your halibut out. Take some more mayonnaise. Put it on the fish. Really good for your cholesterol. <laughs> this looks pretty good. But what it does is the mayonnaise locks in the flavor too and it keeps it moist. So what you do is you cover it with a nice, nice layer of mayonnaise. Oh, yeah, you, you missed go. an entire you spot on the side. Cheese, then you just coat it with the Parmesan. Look at that. Okay. Then you're gonna throw it This in looks the good. I cook them for about 15 minutes. Take them out and then I broil them the top for like about three minutes and all the stuff melts and burns and it's just so good. So you have a nice it's baby gravy and thick. You got the crispy top cheese. Top there, yep, yeah, you got crispy cheese, you got asparagus right there. Are we gonna go serve this to the guys? Yeah, we're gonna give this to the guys. So let's go see what the, see if they like it or not. I think they're gonna give me a hard time no matter what. Sorry it took so long. I What's up, boys? And catch the fish. That's beautiful. I don't know why you recommended that. That was a very basic, underwhelming dish. I expected him to start dumping seawater on it or something cool. He's a thousand bits kinky. The raid went incredible. Yeah, I got some of the best drops you could imagine. These are five gift subs, Papa Pain and gift sub Cosmic. Why do people recommend Arcade Craniacs? I really don't get it. It's like the most unenjoyable shit. Yes, it's satire. That doesn't make it good. I, 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 just, uh, I don't understand. Gas Station Encounters is another one. It's the same thing. Every single time. In all of them we've seen, it's always the same thing. This guy came in here and he ate a potato chip out of this bag, and then he put the bag back and left. Do you recognize this guy? Here, how about... Which one's... This has the most views out of this first top layer. Alright, you guys, if you look in the top left corner of the screen, you're gonna see that this is a Fave Trip Collaboration! That's right, everybody knows Fave Trip Collaborations are the best collaborations. Now, we're gonna be paying attention to the gentleman in the black hoodie that is about to walk in the door right now. He's oh, wait, not is the this like, little rascal. Is this a Obviously, robbery or something? What does Pistol you Packer put that mean? Mask on before you enter the store and the camera gets a good look at your face. So, he's gonna finally get that mask on. He's gonna come over here and he's gonna grab some oil and he's gonna scope out the store real quick. See what he's working with. Oh, yeah. This is going to be a piece of cake. Should I steal it now or should I wait? Yeah. So what does Pistol Packer mean? Distract the cashier and there he is. Uh, you know what? I'll hold off on the oil and oh, what do we got here? Are those cookies? Yeah, I think I'll take one of those. And give some bazonga and give some etko in the prime. Oil. Whoa there, Jimmy, what are you doing now? Oh, hey, I'll get that from you. Yeah, that's totally not a gun. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. So clearly, he has his CCW. Obviously, why else would he be strapped? So he's going to continue looking at the oil, even though he has one down his pants along with that free cookie. It's, it's fucking it's hard to sit through one of the videos. I'm just not a fan. At least that wasn't the same thing as always, where it's this guy drinks some orange soda. Or whatever, orange flavored Smirnoff and puts it back. But this is like the most requested channel and I don't get why. It's not fun at all. Let's give me some cherry red. I do love bikers though, so I think this one has potential. And this guy looks like that YouTube sorcerer. Forgot his name now. Look at the counter when I walk in the store. Chipping a butter. That's what I'm looking for. Hard to say, obviously. I'm not a cum scientist.
No, not happening, baby gravy. I've already paid my respects to it. Let's do some drinking. They go in my pocket. Now there's nothing in my hand. So it's a banger. Bar rescue. Please don't donate to suggest things, but yeah, that's another show that I think's uh, kind of rough. Bit of a cold streak right now. Come on now, so who's gonna come? So deal. Lightway with three single serve Jif peanut butters. You see, like, I don't get it. I have nothing against the guy doing it, but nothing happens. It, it would be if I put a GoPro in, like, a single aisle of Walmart and just watched people walk around. And this guy took some peanut butter. Fuck. What happened? He took peanut butter. He's, I think it was three peanut butter jars. And I have like, interesting things happened. It'd be great. I love the idea of the channel, but every single video is just like that. It's like the smallest, most petty crime imaginable stretched across five minutes. I get to see them walk like NPCs in a video game. And then they leave with, like, a single potato chip. Thanks for the five gift subs, Butter. And the tier one Classic Fool and resub Johnny Ash. Well, I'll look up Bar Rescue, though. Maybe the show's incredible now. It's all still fake, but maybe it's still f in remarkable. Maybe they've made it the best thing ever. Capo's mm -hmm. transformation. Here's a nice clip. Is Capo still open, or did it close down soon after John's renovations? Is there some Fred? You really... Please don't donate to suggest things. Put it in the normal chat. Atheists are video game addicts. I will tell you right now, I love that title. Trust God. And, and you know what all these atheists have in common? You know, all of, they've been attacking us online. They put out a, a little two-hour documentary trying to expose the one pastor and I put out, and Brother Brandon put out a two-hour documentary. You know what all these atheists have in common? Video games! Fuck them! What? They're, they're gamers? Video games! Uh. And, and Harry Potter, you get on their channel, they're in fantasy land! That's all they ever do! Well, it's going too far. Harry Potter? They can't think for themselves. And games? They sit back and they drink coke all day and sit behind the video game system and then wonder why, oh, you, oh you're crazy, Brother Powell, for believing in a creator. Oh, you're insane! No, you're crazy! And you need to get off the video game system and somebody needs to preach to them the gospel of Jesus Christ and so that they can be saved. That's what we need. Amen! I'm sick and tired of these stinking video games. Yeah, fuck those things. Listen with people. And that god and creator is Ninja of Fortnite. Hoorah. Well, that was, that was wild. Got the whole sermon. Thanks for some Gabster, Honey Bits, Killer Maniac, Nickel, and the Prime Pancake. Have fun skydiving, Kelter, and happy birthday. Thanks for the resub Corn Hub. <clears throat> What if I don't drink coke? Then you're not an atheist or a gamer. You don't belong to either of our clubs, weirdo. Look at the reset Pepin. This is the Prime Kib and Peerless. That does sound like a nostalgia trip. Good to see you, Himiko.
The most radioactive man. We watched that. Trust God, 1769. I thought this was going to be the rest of that church's material. Oh my god, wait, this is the same channel that posted the God Hates Video Games? Wait a minute, how many video game lectures are there? Skillet exposed. <gasps> Skillet? The Christian band that made popular hits such as Rebirth, Savior, Monster, and all the other shit you would hear in a Call of Duty montage back in 2009? They are demon-possessed people? What? Ecclesiastes what 7 verse 5 says, It is better to hear the rebuke of the wise than for a man to hear the song of fools. And, and worldly music is the song of fools. Oh, the song shit. of people I knew it. don't believe on the Lord. Why do you Music is the devil. Wicked whoremonger. With the, you know, okay. They're demon-possessed people. They're one of the 21st century's most successful rock bands, Excuse selling more than 11 million units worldwide. We're talking about the quartet from Wisconsin known as Skillet. Lead singer John Cooper joins us now by Skype. Hey, John, their new you album, demon. Their faith and the ministry opportunity. What do you have to God say for yourself? It. But what do you want the legacy of Skillet to be? Legacy of Skillet, what I am most proud about is the fact that Skillet, I think, has done something that is fairly unprecedented and that we have been on some of the biggest green. rock tours in the world. Appreciate it. Open for the biggest rock bands of all time, some of them. Iron Maiden, Black Sabbath, uh, Slipknot, uh, the, the, that list can go on and on and on. Uh, Ozzy Osbourne. So, uh, when well, the does first the first single is called Stars, what do you hope people this is more of like a promo world with hard rock bands? Some of the biggest secular rock tours in the world we've been on. And Every day, more and more artists or bands go. in the Christian industry. This is an article I'm reading. He's speak not in a bathroom. Touring. Oh wow, he is in a bathroom. Wait, oh, that's kind of nutty. It just shows how little respect he had for CBNnews.com, I guess. Ah, right, I have an interview. I'm just going to go to the shitter at the restaurant here. Makes sense. Every day, more and more artists or bands in the Christian industry, this is an article I'm reading, speak about shedding the title hey, of Jeff. Christian. In an interview with STL today, front, front man of the band Skillet... John Cooper went into greater detail about why he and his band prefer to avoid using the word Christian. Oh, you blasphemer. So this is how John, is. Listen to this. how could you? I just tell people you spit in the face of the Lord. Band. I leave Christian out, he told STL today. A lot of people don't know what Christian rock is. Yeah, they do. That's a lie. Or no. <laughs> what do you mean? It's only for Christian people. We're I, not a band that only that sings claim. to Christian people. I meet tons of fans. And I've had fans say, I'm an atheist and I love your message. Well, then you're not, that's not Christian. Yeah, if atheists go to hell. To an atheist? Yeah. Your message isn't Christian. You should be Sorry. killing them in the streets the or something. You there you want, but it's not Christian. Skill, it's weak. And the statement, that statement there speaks volumes of, unto me. I, I just like clicked on one song just for like a few seconds. Uh, I think it was last night. Sherry's like, what are you listening to? like garbage and I turned it off. <laughs> the song was totally Yeah, stupid. I'd rather listen to the same fucking three songs at church song was, on repeat. I'm glad it's not like stuck in my head. Yeah, fuck um, yeah. That's why I only listened to it for a few seconds. I just want to see like, is it super hard rock? It is. It's super hard rock. Talk about your faith super in hard, Jesus Christ huh? and how it motivates you inside and outside the prime and the prime and tornar and tornard. Oh gosh. I mean, my faith in Jesus is is everything you're going he seems battle. like a nice guy um, which is why he's a demon he says this i say then walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh how do you walk in the spirit when it comes to music singing to yourself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing with melody in your heart to the lord singing with grace in your heart to the lord <laughs> But verse this guy says, can't for sing for shit, I promise you that. The spirit and the spirit against Probably the sounds flesh. like diarrhea being pushed through a trombone. 
the one to the other so that you cannot do the things that you would. If you pump your brain full of that garbage all, all week long, you're not going to be filled with the Spirit during those times. It's contrary to the things of the Spirit, right? You, you're feeding the flesh with that kind of music. Mm. And that's not what we're supposed to do because God doesn't say, you know, songs, hymns, spiritual songs, and Metallica. Okay, because Metallica is a Christian band. No, they're not. Thanks, you said, well, Pantera we... is not a Christian band. So, um, examples of so called Christian artists and what they come up with. No, wait, that's it? What the fuck? They weren't exposed at all. He didn't go into detail. Son of a bitch. They have some interesting topics here. Veganism exposed by the Bible? This is all over the place. What? What was the name of the other guy who was really mad at gamers in particular? The 36-year-old virgin. What was his name again? Shit, I can't remember either. No, it's a different guy. No, not Skippy. Christ. It was the guy that was like, you're sissies, you're effeminate, you're losers. And then he like tosses a ball in the air. He's like, oh, 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 gamers are losers. That guy, what was his name? Fuck, no one remembers? Why women should not say amen in church. What? What is that? Spirit. But the Bible says in 1 Timothy 2.11, let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man be in silence. Now, flip over, if you would, to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Hey, it says, oh. let your Thanks women keep fan. silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak. But Whoa. they are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the this Lord. This is in the Bible? And if they will learn anything, let them ask their what? husbands at home. For it is a shame for a woman, for women to speak in the church. Now, it says Holy in 1 Timothy 2.11, let the woman learn in this silence. This is in the Bible and not like all subjection. on so Facebook? Therefore, obviously, before the service, before the, the congregation begins the service, there's chatting and talking going on. That's perfectly legitimate. And then when we all sing praises to God, of course the ladies should also lift up their voices and sing praises unto God. But wait a minute, when it's learning time, it's silence time. See what I mean? <laughs> so what it's saying is that they are to learn. I love the guys time. in the front row. It's silence time. See what I mean? So what it's saying mm. is that they wait, are to learn. It? When it's learning time, yep. it's silence yep. time. See what I mean? Yep. So what it now my wife needs to shut the fuck up. I'm trying to learn about God. She's not welcome in here. It's a boys club. Boys and shit. We like that. Not you. Shut the fuck up. I'm trying to learn about the Bible. Am I right, Brother Sean? What it's saying is that they are to learn in silence. And that's why it talks about in 1 Corinthians 14, 35, also what we just looked at. It says, if they will learn anything. It says, when the learning is going on, they are not permitted to speak. When the learning no, is that's reasonable. they are to be inside. No, when okay, the preaching okay. of God's word is taking place, it, first of all, it's not for a woman to be doing the preaching. And oh. second of all, it's not for women to be speaking. Even oh. the Bible's really clear. Oh, 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 if they okay. were to have a question. All right, now I see. They, they are not to ask that question in the church. No, of course one. not. Why, why would and they? Number two, even if they want to I ask guess God doesn't like their women. husband, they should wait until they get home. You know, they should oh not God. in the service be talking. And by the way, this is why I don't believe that women should say. Uh, it's shocking to me that I don't see a wedding ring on his finger. This dude is a catch. Are you kidding me? You're telling me this pussy slaying machine is single? Oh, what in tarnation? Oh, what kind of world do we live in? Or a good old red-blooded God-fearing patriot 
can't have a wife. You know, he probably just chooses not to. That's probably what it is. Say amen during the preaching either. Simply because amen, and uh, I talked about this in the Spanish class, what amen clown, actually means. It Slim means and Chris truly and or verily. In fact, when you read in your Bible uh, where it says, verily, verily, I say unto you, that's a pretty common statement in the Bible. Basically, that's from the word amen. If you read that in a Greek New Testament, it's like amen, amen, I say unto you. But that would sound kind of weird in English if we said it that way. But just a lot of people don't understand what the word amen means, but amen <laughs> basically means Pika that's Crawford true. And the prime goopy. True. So when I'm preaching Thank and you, I Nick say something Henry. that you agree with, that you believe in, and you say amen, you're saying that's right. That's true. That's the truth. Now, here's the thing. When, when the preaching is going on, Oh, women Jesus should not Reaper, express their opinion about the sermon. Even if it's a positive opinion. And of course, the heart is in the right place. Now, I did one time, I was preaching one time, and a woman actually disagreed with me. Oh, that bitch. You know, what? I, I said something and she said I was wrong. What, what was she thinking? You know, and I, I kind of you know, blew up a little bit. But anyway. Uh, well, yeah, rightfully so. But, you know, Questioning you? There could be as, times where as a woman's woman? disagreeing. And, and you know what? Did you guys the hear that? in the right place, of course. But the audacity. in reality... If we're going to be true to scripture, then basically we would say, okay, when it's time for learning, that's a time for women to keep silence. That's a time Jesus to learn. Christ. Oh my God. What fucking lunacy. Holy shit. Really appreciate the fat drop, Reaper. Thank you, man. Thank you for the generosity. I'm sorry to hear that the work shift was rough tonight, Harmon. I hope you're doing all right, though. Thanks to the gifts of Catfish and Rinzaku. I don't know, Billiam. I'm unfamiliar with this preacher. Thanks to the resub PH of zero. There's some wild stuff on here. Iceland, a nation of bastards. He doesn't like women and he doesn't like Iceland. All right. Thanks to the gifts of Rinzaku and the Reseb Momogumi and Bara and Kutsurdik. No, I think this is just a compilation of local churches. Because it's always the same people popping up on here, so I imagine the account belongs to a member. Would be my guess. I'm really not sure. All right, well, that's the end of that. That was pretty wild, not gonna lie. And thanks to the resub GUI. So what was the other guy's name? His name is John Doe. Oh, Brian Dillinger. That's what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is just the channel that compiled some of his stuff. This is the one that I was thinking of as well. Unto him, and he said unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Put every man his sword by his side, and go in and out from gate to gate. Throughout yeah, uh, he, he stood up to the local uh, uh, Renaissance Fair band or whatever the fuck was going on there. What is he up to these days? Is it a sin for me to continue on YouTube? I have an answer to that. Hold on. I don't know if you could hear it, but I ripped a lot of ass. Exposing the heresies of Edward P.F. One, two, three...
He's a tier one garlic mercy in the prime brain pyro and aqua. Yeah, I guess so, Owen. Nah, I don't know about that. Oh, actually, I have seen that suggestion. That was big on Reddit. I did actually see that one. Thanks to resub Crested Moon. Okay. We'll move on, but that was pretty wild. That was an adventure. Thanks to the five gift subs, Gato. Thank you, man. I'm not super familiar with Danny Mullen, but I've seen a video or two. I think it was fine, from what I remember. Oh, Kyle Hill makes good videos. Name sounds familiar. And that's why, because we just watched this thing on the Rocco's Basilisk. I don't watch Jubilee anymore. It's not very fun. I used to like Jubilee, but not so much anymore. Six bros versus one secret PewDiePie. What? Thanks to the resub mana bear. Yeah, I'll cut my hair once it starts touching the toilet seat when I shit. I'm not going to cut it short again, but I will cut it a little bit. Two women speed date, 20 men. How's that go? Before we start this video, I just want to take a moment to say thank you. On the way here, we noticed that there was an outback. Yeah, the steakhouse? Yeah, the steakhouse. Has there been there? Well, I'm vegetarian and she's vegan. Oh, well, oh, okay. then this... They have plenty of options. This is my friend, Lily. We met in... They're college. moving around like yeah, video game NPCs right now. Like an idol animation. That looks like these really beautiful rugs. And she even made the earrings that I'm wearing right now. This is Izzy, <laughs> and the fun fact that came to my mind was that she wore a duct tape dress to Improv Nationals, which I think is pretty cool because she made it herself. Nice. At the end of the day, we're both pretty open to most people, and like, <laughs> what matters is a level of empathy. I gotta take a shit. The ability to listen, I think that. Yeah. Let's see how the guys do. On an ideal first date, it'll probably be like a beach day, you know, have like a little picnic. And then after that, we hit like a live event show. With like some music Enjoy some music after. What kind of music you guys listen to? <laughs> Everything but country. On the way here, we noticed- that That's like the most like normal that. answer the ever. Steakhouse? Yeah, the steakhouse. Same shit I say. So, Country's the only insufferable well, genre. I'm vegetarian and she's vegan. Oh, uh, well, oh, okay. then this might not we work can out, work with but- it. No, we can yeah. work with it. So we were thinking that we would check in first on Yelp, mm -hmm. get that free bloomin' onion right, for the totally. table, and then maybe ask for some vegan options, I guess. I like the planning, though. Yeah. I think it'd be fun- Well, this isn't going very well. Both musicians, they could come to our show. What music do you play? We say cyber. A very oh. cyber. For our first date, we would take you to either a concert, if you're feeling up to it, a music festival, and we would just dance the night away. Yeah, and maybe after we could go to like a karaoke bar. Oh, yes, so there we, we go. My boy could serenade you. I don't it could be a duet. It could oh, be a duet. Be a duet. No, no. First one he only performs solo. Before, so you guys aren't stressing about anything. You're vegan and vegetarian, so we could go to <laughs> Veggie Grill. Probably go surfing, so we're both from San Diego. And then probably bottomless mimosas. Then we go to the beach. And All right, well, that's enough of that. That was good, very good. I'm gonna go take a shit. I think that helped me get my shit ready. Uh, I'll be right back, just give me one second.
yeah. I'm fucking back, baby. Let's go. There's the resub Bambi. And massive pleb in the prime Rocky. Appreciate that. Thank you, Bar Hat and the resub Isaac and Freaky. Yeah, he's super cute. Pace at you. Hope you've been well. He's my parents' puppy. You heard me? You're welcome. Next is Prime Scotty and Tvedek. And the Prime Yachi. Prime Oxymars and Nameless Default and No Face. And the Tier 1 Battle Cry. Seen the SpongeBob skin theory? And the Resub Grip. Do you like Eminem's music? Yeah, I used to like his music a lot. I don't like a single song he's put out for like the last eight or nine years that I can think of, but yeah, I used to be a huge fan. I actually listened to some of his music the other day. Does anyone remember the song Ass Like That? That's a fucking goofy song. I didn't remember it at all. Like, past the chorus. The way you move it, I can't believe it. Never seen an ass like that. Make my pee-pee go to doing, doing, doing. And then the song goes in like a really weird direction. Talking about like Mary Kate and Ashley's tits and shit. It's, it's weird. But man, that chorus bangs. Thanks to the resub, Zach, and the tier one, foolishly relying on my eyes and the bits illusion. I hope you're doing well, illusion. And yes, I've seen that, dummy. The resub, Logan Tor, and tier one, Gamer Chad, squad official. Yeah, we got world first in the raid easily. Wasn't even a close contest, really. What is the femur breaker? What are you talking about? Where do you see femur breaker? Yeah, of course I've seen shin kicking competitions. Next to the resub Zach. I haven't watched everything. It's just people usually recommend the same shit. Is the prime weeb trash solar shade? Oh, solar sands. What's that? Oh, I've seen this. I have seen this channel. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is an official article by Discord, showing in great detail why they recently changed their brand look. The post goes through the various justifications for the changes People want to the logo, simple, minimalist mark, things that take color. a second for to logo, identify. they noted concerns about the readability of the antennas it has when printed on different types of materials, or when printed on really small surfaces such as a pin. The document even noted how parts of the original logo were asymmetrical. The word mark was changed overall to be more legible. The new brighter color, they call Blurple, was chosen to be more bold and playful. On top it of is this, very they playful. refined and diversified their whole brand color palette. It. They even got thorough feedback from members of the Discord community for direction on style, colors, and even some of the in-app phrasing. So it looks like they have everything in order. No change seems arbitrary, and each one has logical reasoning behind it. So what did people think of it? We loved it. Ah. Uh. Well. Thanks for three, Dan. I appreciate it, man. Mm -hmm. Oh. 
Now, before we move on with the rest of the video, I believe some changes are in order. Damn. Ah, that's better. I don't think I've seen a comment section in such unanimous agreement about hating something since YouTube Rewind 2018. Yeah. Still one of their odd, best work. Isn't it? Just how much backlash there is for changes that compared to other things we've seen this year are pretty minor. The Discord logo just looks more like a game controller, and the shade of blue has been saturated by like 5%. However, Thank even though from a I practical will. design standpoint, many of these changes make sense, yeah, it sounds like a fun I can idea, still like understand the hate. This Discord logo does seem more reduced, less playful. This word mark is less dynamic, more awkwardly soft looking, if that makes any <clears> sense. <throat> and the brighter color, well, I stare at screens for long periods yeah, I don't really of time, care too much so about I really it, don't need any more brightness than I already get. It seems to me that while Discord tried to improve, guarantee is going without any further. But yeah, I've seen. I'm pretty sure he covered. Um, what were they? They were the Petco one, which he also touched on there for a second, and a couple other big ones for logo changes that I never even knew changed. But yeah, I don't really give a fuck. It just has to do with the idea or the trend where people want like the most simple thing imaginable. If you have to look at something for more than a second to identify it, you fucked up. Oh, that's not him that made that video. Yeah, it's the same concept. The gentleman working on anything new? Yep. We've got three new songs completed. So now it's just about getting the music videos going. We're going to be filming one pretty soon at the same kind of studio that The Mandalorian was filmed in. We're going to try and make it real fucking over the top and goofy. And then the other two we still have to plan out fully. The Unreal Live background stage thing? What are you talking about? You talking about like in my background or is it something you see on the screen somewhere? There's the prime sweaty. The bits loafus. <clears throat> is your music on Spotify? Yeah, it is. No, we don't watch Food Dip anymore. Oh, 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 you were asking about the studio thing. Yeah, 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 that uses the Unreal on all that to capture a lot of the shit in real time. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're up to date on how that shit works. Nice. There's the Prime Max and the Resub Dylan. And the Prime Ash says Rar. Chester Stone. Are these just vlogs? I'm guessing they're just vlogs. These are the Prime Semenaz. Yeah, all the gentlemen songs are DMCA free. You could play that shit on loop for years, it wouldn't matter. You're welcome to. Thanks for the resub roasted. Thanks, man. Eye for an eye court show. What the fuck is this? Uh, can I get something a little shorter than 20 minutes? Here we go. Oh, this is just part one, so it's a full thing. I just want some highlights. This must be a very old show. Oh, let's see it anyway. Nom, 
Next, on today's episode of I for an Eye. So what's an accountant doing outside at a strip joint slashing another person's tires? Didn't oh, you know that's what a the fuck? Offense? Not if they're my tires. Yes, you I did. I kissed him. That was You it. told me that you weren't even into guys anymore. And then, it, what, is it your ex-boyfriend or what? And, and oh, boy. Did you have any chance to explain that in the first place? We probably and how do you know the plaintiff did it? Because I had yeah, to take from the surveillance fake. camera at my job last night. <laughs> A VHS tape, you're fucked. Word out of you, and I'm gonna ask him to step in. This is some of the goofiest shit I've seen in a minute. Is not but I don't want to watch just. 20 minutes on it. That's why they bring their disputes here. Real people, real problems, real revenge. I don't think we'll see any of that. Bless. She's dabbing. That's innovative. This show is definitely from the 90s and they're Justice getting dabs in. Is I for an eye. Hey, it's me, Kato Kalen, and welcome to another episode of I for an Eye. Hey, right, what's in up, Kato? Episode, you'll meet two star-crossed lovers who do battle over bills after a relationship gone bad. And if you think this is just another case of he said, she said, think again. I am suing her. This is very for intense. Her share of the bills and the rent. And I'm I'm also suing her. Uh for the money that I spent on brand new tires for her truck. Yeah, I still want to watch 20 minutes of it though. It looks intense. Oh, we, we completed the raid in record time. It was just a little too easy for us. But I'm sure you'll finish it soon, Bo. You just keep saying George Washington. The fuck does that even mean? Typing in George Washington to YouTube is not going to bring me what you want me to see. Such a vague title. Probably won't do that bar hat, but thank you. I really don't know why people recommend arcade craniacs. I don't get it. I, I don't I don't giggle when I hear goofy memes in a video when it's that's all it is. I get it satire, but it's grating. Just hearing the same fucking Among Us memes for fifteen minutes. I hate it. It's not for me. Yeah, I mean you're welcome to like it if you want, but it's definitely not for me. Thanks for the gift sub Sam and the resub Dave. He's already seen all the ear pulling competitions. We did Defunct Land a couple, like, more recently. I don't think there's anything we haven't seen. That looks interesting. These are some syphilis and ghost goner. Tennis racket smashing. Jesus. You actually just wanted me to look at compilations of tennis players breaking their racket? I thought there was going to be like a game show or some shit. All right, well, let's see how angry they get. This is the most epic tennis racket smashes. Pretty wild. Those were some of the most epic tennis racket smashes I've seen. The worst jobs in history. It's got a surprising amount of shit and piss and cum. This is Twitch. You, I, I can't watch that. Yeah, of course, I've seen Peter Kane dog training. People keep recommending this Jose Canseco video. Thanks for five good subs, vampire. Appreciate it. The 
Baseball doesn't exist. True. At one point, Jose Canseco was the best baseball player on the planet. He's also been the most hated player on the planet. He's had the biggest contract in baseball history, but was also blackballed by the entire league. He's introduced the game's biggest stars to steroids, and then told on the game's biggest stars for doing steroids. He's been called a liar, a cheater, a drug addict, and a white cheater. He's fought a man who's 7 feet tall, and he's fought a man who's 5 foot 6. He's been to prison, he's lived in a garage, he's been on reality TV shows, he's written two New York Times best-selling books, Oh, and has okay. even claimed to have met aliens. Jose Canseco has done it all, and he's done he more cool. than anybody in baseball history. Shortly after well, Jose Canseco was drafted in the 15th round of the 1982 MLB draft, he admits that he believed he had no chance of becoming a major league player. He played for five minor league teams in two years, never getting above single A, and his stats were pretty awful. Canseco's early professional turn. career was so miserable, at one point his team made him be the bat boy. That's right, for an entire series of games, he didn't hit, he didn't field, he didn't do anything. He collected bats and balls, and was laughed at and made fun of by teammates That's and That's an important position, though. It. This was enough Someone's to do for it. Canseco to literally quit baseball for about 20 minutes until a pitching coach on the team came up to him and talked him out of it. A conversation that saved Canseco's career and may have ruined the careers and legacies of cheaters across the league. Around that same time, Canseco's mother was sick in the hospital. Canseco was told to leave his team to go see his mother in Florida, but by the time he arrived, she had passed away. According to Canseco, this was the moment he decided that he would do whatever it took to become the best baseball player in the world in order to honor his mother, which meant Aww. doing a bunch of steroids. Uh -oh. Usually doing a bunch of illegal drugs to honor your mother is a weird move, but in this case, it was actually pretty touching, and it worked better than Canseco ever expected. He gained 25 pounds of muscle that offseason, came back to baseball, Damn. and quickly became the Athletics' number one prospect. He was so good, he even earned the nickname The Natural, even though he literally was the most unnatural player on the planet. It was 1985, and although there was no real way to prove it, Canseco is believed to probably be one of the very no few, if not the way. only- No fucking way. Wait, is that true? For $5,000, you, you can hunt Bigfoot with Jose Canseco? Canseco? I gotta look that up. Sorry to blue ball you. Are you fucking serious? Can I book one? That sounds like the best use of $5,000 ever. This was in 2019. Does he still offer it? Or did they finally catch Bigfoot and inject him with steroids? I don't see anything recent. Let me see. Booking. I have to contact his management company. Do you think... There can't be that many people paying five grand to hunt fucking Sasquatch with Jose Conseco. Do you think if we reached out, we could get him to come hunt the skunk ape instead? Someone's got to catch the skunk ape down here. I think Jose Conseco is the man for it. <clears throat> Thanks to the Prime Snake and the Resub Cinesol. Yeah, I'm going to keep this open. Reach out to management and see if we can set that up. It sounds great. Thanks to the Recep, super awesome username. I'll be right back though. Give me one second. And then we'll watch more of this because it's kind of interesting though. Thanks to the Gift Sub Raven.
I'm better. I used to give Sub Raven in the Prime Shadow. Only player doing steroids at the time. And this shows in his performance. By the time his rookie year was over, he had already hit a home run in every American League ballpark and won Rookie of the Year. He was a beast and he knew it. He told reporters before his third season he would be the first player in history to hit 40 home runs and steal 40 bases in a single season. Everybody called him an arrogant show off, and then that season, and then he, he did it. The first player in history to hit 40 home runs and steal 40 bases, and then everybody just called him an arrogant show off who was the best player in the world. Over the next decade, Canseco would be one of the league's best players on one of the league's best teams. A year after he won Rookie of the Year, Mark McGuire won the same award, and together they formed the largest one-two punch in baseball history. They were the Bash Brothers. They were huge, Thanks they were luck. famous, they hit bombs, and they even created their own handshake. They were also two of the most blatant steroid users in history. <laughs> but they were the Bash Brothers, and they hit baseballs further than anyone. However, apparently the Bash Brothers That's weren't so as cute. close as the media portray them to be, and today McGuire considers Conseco his arch enemy. But oh, they were close enough sad. at the time for Mark to let his Bash Brother Jose inject him with steroids in the team bathroom. There's Over six line. seasons, the two combined for 11 All-Star Games, two Rookie of the Years, four Silver Sluggers, and a World Series championship. By the time he was 24, Canseco had already made baseball history by being the first player to achieve a 40-40 season. He had won a Rookie of the Year award, an MVP, a World Series, and in 1990, the Athletics gave him a five-year, $23.5 million deal. Not the bad. The biggest contract in baseball history up to that point. But Canseco's baseball ability was often overshadowed because during this time he was creating the legacy of Jose Canseco, which is why people still love Jose today. It has nothing to do with baseball, it has a lot more to do with doing a bunch of weird and questionable things. By the time he left Oakland in 1992, he had been arrested several times, once for going 140 miles per hour and leading cops on a 15 mile chase. Wow! Jose has since claimed that he that? was also caught going 202 miles per hour. But cops let him go because according to him at the time he was the most popular athlete in the world. He was also arrested for having a loaded handgun in his car while on a college campus. His secretary was also arrested for bringing a handgun on an airplane with Jose in 1989. Okay. Jose often carried a gun Just for in protection case. because he is an extremely paranoid person. He once Madden refused a cup of coffee motion. at an autograph session saying, you're not going to kill me that easy. He was banned from the Mexican Baseball League for testosterone and failed a court right. order drug test from his probation officer, but he doesn't blame steroid use for these instances. He blames the MLB for conspiring to keep him out of the game. But it is a lot more likely that Jose's lifelong steroid use had a lot more to do with the failed drug test than the MLB did. Anyway, in 1992, he was arrested again for he ramming kept his it car loaded into for his wife's car during an argument at a gas station. This was the first time... Well, maybe his wife was having an affair with Bigfoot. Wife, God damn. How deep does it was go, I wonder? a simple accidental fender bender. Some people blame angry situations like this on Jose's steroid use, but... Before I forget, I have to know, is there footage of that police chase? At one point, that's got to be fucking great. Jose Canseco going 140 on a goddamn police pursuit. Probably tossing baseballs and Bigfoot food out of the window or something. Like bait. There's got to be footage. No. But these chases look fucking intense. This wasn't even close. They didn't even give me like a Jose Canseco related video. They just gave me police chases and then a Grand Theft Auto cutscene over here, basically. Jesus Christ. <clears throat> well, I'm going to keep this open anyway because it looks kind of wild. Makes a tier one sprung in the resub all day tray and gives sub chocolate. He maintains that this argument makes no sense at all. Saying, quote unquote, are we to say that any individual who's on steroids that has an angry moment is due to steroids? What about the individual who gets angry so and sprung. kills someone who's not on steroids? What do we blame it on now? So, according to Canseco, he didn't hit his wife with his car because of steroids. He did it because he was pissed off at her. So, you really can't blame steroids. I guess you have to blame him. Uh -huh. You also can't blame steroids for the time his 20-pound tortoise worth $25,000 escaped his backyard no! into traffic, forcing a sheriff to save its life in 1991. 
This is just one instance of one of Jose's strange pets tortoise. causing a weird fiasco. Recently, Jose had his girlfriend paint his tortoise, which apparently is a very good way to suffocate a tortoise. Jose got a lot of backlash for this one. We hope the tortoise is okay. He was also pulled over with goats in the back of his car in 2013. So he's like Dan Bilzerian, but less rich. But luckily, the goats were wearing diapers. Instances like this oh, have always good. been part of Jose Canseco's story because although he had an amazing borderline Hall of Fame career on the field, his real talent talent was being one of the league's weirdest, wildest, and sometimes mindless players in, off official. the field. But when he was traded to Texas, oh, his it. talent shined very bright on Thanks the field as well. Car. During this play, he headbutted a baseball over the wall for a home run. A few days later, the Harrisburg Heat, a professional soccer team from Pennsylvania, offered Canseco a contract. But I had to hurt declined. like shit. This may be the most memorable moment of Jose Canseco's time in Texas and perhaps his entire playing career. But there were a lot of significant that single-handedly gave him an encephalon injury. Probably the one with Holy the most shit. impact was teaching Ivan Rodriguez, Rafael Palmeiro, and Juan Gonzalez how to do steroids, which he did in the Texas Rangers bathroom. Jose was also asked to pitch for one inning one in a blowout up. loss against the Boston Red Sox. He gave up two hits, three walks, three runs, and injured his elbow, which he had to get season-ending surgery on. This occurred only three days after Canseco was hit in the head for a home run, and it's a microcosm of Jose Canseco's entire career. Because although Canseco has done a lot of amazing things on the baseball field, unfortunately for him, his embarrassing moments are a lot more interesting. Interesting. Canseco would go on to play on six teams in his last seven years. He was frequently injured and many saw Jose's later years as a major disappointment and blamed his injuries on his obvious and intense steroid use. But Canseco's final years were not as bad as some remember. He hit 46 home runs in 1998, won a silver slugger, made the all-star team in 1999, and throughout Jose's entire 17-year career, he never once batted below league average in OPS. Not During his bad. Years, he Good was work, Jose. arrested for hitting his wife, oh. but again, please do not blame this on steroids. Jose says he is not a wife beater and only pulled her hair while they were arguing in a friend's car. His wife yeah, wrote an okay. entire book about their crazy relationship. Jose has accused her of hooking up with Alex Rodriguez and even yeah. says he almost killed himself when he found out she was spending time with tight end Tony Gonzalez. Tony! As, as this was for Jose, it may not have affected him as much as the end of his career did in 2001. After a short year in Chicago where Jose played around league average, no teams in baseball wanted him. According to him, he was willing to play for league minimum and donate his earnings to charity, but all 30 teams said no. He would even go on to try out for the Los Angeles Dodgers, but Tommy Lasorda said Canseco seemed a little bit out of shape. He responded by calling Lasorda a chubby little fat troll who was the worst <laughs> Humpty Dumpty pasta eating moron I've ever seen. Yeah, so yeah that Jose sounds was reasonable. Not taking retirement very well. Get Jose blasted, nerd. That he was being blackballed by MLB. He learned that on they League knew of that Legends. He had such a huge influence on steroid use across the league. But in 2001, Canseco ran into bigger problems stemming from a brawl that he got into in a Miami nightclub. Jose and his twin brother Ozzy, both dressed up as vampires for Halloween, got into a fight, and since Jose is a black belt in Taekwondo, Kung Fu, and according to him, extremely dangerous with nunchucks, he won the fight pretty badly. <laughs> Unfortunately, the court saw this as aggravated battery and sentenced him to probation. He violated probation and was sentenced to two years of house arrest. During this time, Jose began making money by allowing fans to bid for a chance to spend the day with him at his house while he was on house arrest. Potential activities That's so good. by the pool, martial arts lessons, grilling steaks, and taking batting practice. A die -hard hey, I'm under house arrest. Come pay to hang out with me. $2,500. Canseco would later fail a drug test for steroids and spend a month in jail. Jose blamed this on MLB, saying he had no proof, but believed they switched his urine samples to make sure he went to jail so he couldn't play again. When he was released from jail, things got even worse. The people who sent him to jail in the first place were suing him and his brother for beating them up at the nightclub while dressed up as vampires. <laughs> Jose was going through his second divorce, was on house as arrest, was nosy. being sued, had huge amounts of lawyer fees, no endorsements, and no major league offers. He had made over $45 million playing baseball, but a lot of that money was going fast. And many people believe this is the reason Jose wrote the notorious book, Juiced. Jose Canseco is a New York oh, Times best-selling okay. author. Although Everyone's a New York Times best-selling author. Himself, it Every might book be is. the most impactful book in sports history. Canseco obviously needed money and admittedly wanted to do anything he could to destroy Major League Baseball, so he wrote an entire book basically exposing anybody in baseball that he could. And it was wild. 
He exposed people for using steroids, cheating on their wives, and even acknowledged what happened to his junk when he went on the juice. No! He claimed Madonna wanted to have a baby with him, but she wasn't attractive enough. He claimed that he regularly Could be beat true, I guess. Ricky I Henderson know. in races and ran a 3.940 yard dash. He claimed to be the godfather of steroids, said he couldn't live without steroids, and claimed that at the peak of steroids, 85% of MLB players were using them. He admitted to injecting Ivan Rodriguez, Juan Gonzalez, and Rafael Primero with steroids in Texas. He said he taught Miguel Tejado how to use steroids in Oakland. He claimed to have inspired Barry Bonds to do steroids after beating him in a home run contest. He said Jason Giambi was one of steroids' worst abusers, claimed he had no proof but could tell Sammy Sosa was on steroids. He not only said that he injected Mark McGuire with steroids, he also added that McGuire was awkward and couldn't get girls, ran an old lady <laughs> off the road while racing his car, and called reporters homophobic slurs. Conseco instantly okay, became baseball's wow. number one enemy, and the public immediately dubbed him a jealous, money-hungry liar. Which kind of makes sense, because he did say some ridiculous things like being faster than Ricky Henderson, running a 3940, and claiming Roger Clemens. Sorry, pause again. There's something that I need to queue up just in case. Is there footage of Jose Canseco fighting? Oh, yes. How deep does the Jose Canseco lore go? Clemens never cheated on his wife, but when it came to steroids, Canseco told the truth. However, pretty much every person in baseball publicly bashed him and called him a liar for it. Except for Congress, who called in Canseco and several of the players he accused in the book to question them on their use of steroids the and Bruce MLB's Barry. lack of effort to stop them. It became pretty clear pretty quickly that Canseco was actually the only one telling the truth. In the 1990s, Canseco's basically Makes introduced the entire bash. league to steroids and now was doing everything he could to get them out in front of Congress as the entire world watched. Jose publicly stated yeah, not the that he whole world, I didn't watch writing it. Juice, but went Pussy. on to release another book called Vindicated in 2008. Conseco reportedly threatened to expose Maglio Ordonez in the book if he didn't invest in his movie. The MLB reported this to the FBI. When the book came out, Jose claimed he injected Ordonez with steroids and said he introduced A-Rod to a steroid dealer in Canada. And although both of these books were both New York Times bestsellers, Canseco was still broke. He tried selling his World Series ring, went on the reality TV show Surreal Life, Aww. had to foreclose on his home, filmed himself breaking into his own home, and this basically started a long stretch of Canseco doing a lot Man, of that gate for co publicity collapsed and then instantly. trying to make money off them. A stretch that has never really truly ended. Despite being old, having blood contaminated with years of steroid use, and hated by a large portion of baseball, Canseco has never really truly given up on his big league dreams. In 2006, he signed with the San Diego Surf Dogs to attempt a major league comeback as a knuckleball pitcher Why? and a designated hitter. He's like 80 he years old then. after one game with the Surf Dogs. He was sent to a team in Long Beach, batted 176, left the team before the season ended, and was sued by the league and forced to pay a quarter million dollars. He returned Which, to baseball okay. in 2010 at 46 years old, signing to be a bench coach and designated hitter, hoping it would be the start of a journey to become an MLB coach. TMZ also reported that Conseco was living in a friend's garage during this time. The next year, he would play and coach again in the North American League with his brother Ozzy and attempted to get a reality TV show to film it. In 2012, you he was to supposed to play in the Mexican Cameron? League, but was banned for taking I testosterone. It, please, Conseco believed that this to. was because the MLB was trying to keep him out of the league again. He later signed with the Worcester Tornadoes, played in 20 games, then sued the owner for breach of contract, defamation, unjust enrichment, failure to pay wages, and misrepresentation. Jose would go on to play short stints in independent leagues every year until 2018 when he was 53 years old. He's also Holy participated shit. in basically every local home run derby that's occurred in the past 10 years. However, Conseco's true athletic calling in recent years hasn't been baseball. It's been MMA and boxing. Yeah! His boxing career began in 2008 when he fought by Sikahama. He is a local TV news reporter and former NFL player. Conseco was 7 inches taller and weighed 40 more pounds, but Sikahama was an amateur boxer growing up. God, there's so much to this and the chat keeps filling me with new details. He recently fought an intern at Barstool Sports and took a dive just to get money for the fight because he was broke. What the fuck? To be honest, I was thinking about that the other day. Like, I was pretty disappointed when uh, Ben Askren got fucking blasted by Jake Paul. And it was pretty clear, like, he didn't care. He just wanted to get out quickly. I was thinking like that. Like, if I got challenged to a fight with one of the Paul brothers, I'd probably just take the check and take a dive instantly. 
Like, I just, like, fall right on the mat and just call it a day. It's like, that's speed running a fat check for doing nothing. Like, now I have, I have nothing against Ben Askren for it now, the more I think about it. So if Jose Canseco pulled a Ben Askren, good for him. Dude's 90 years old. Contaminated with steroids and hunting Bigfoot. Thanks to the resub scrub and defarious. Up and Jose. He does porn? You waited that long to tell me? This isn't on screen, right? No, we're good. Oh! <laughs> Jose Canseco's got his own category on Pornhub. Well, at least, in th well, maybe it's not there anymore since they like purged every video. Jose Canseco nude leaked pics. I don't really trust those sites. Jose Canseco sexy and topless 21 photos from the fappening. Was was Jose Canseco's nudes leaked in the fappening with Jennifer Lawrence and all that? I don't remember that being a big deal. Oh, I also just noticed. This isn't Jose, this is Josie. That might not be the same thing. That might just be a porn star who has a name close to it. No, this one is definitely Jose Canseco. Thanks, there's some Yukon, Frankie, and the Prime Phoenix. That's his daughter? Josie Canseco is his daughter? This, this fucking Jose Canseco rabbit hole is, is it goes deep. Jose wasn't able to use his Kung Fu or nunchucks, so he was knocked out in the first round. In 2009, Jose Canseco went on a fighting tear, first against former child actor and celebrity Danny Bonaducci. The fight was in Philadelphia, <laughs> okay. Vince Papali was the referee, and Canseco walked in with Vince a bunch Papali? of fake tattoos. Bonaducci is only 5'6". And he wore fake tattoos? Draw, Why? Although some say Canseco let him tie, although most people say who really cares. Canseco then decided what? to put his black belts in tie. Why would he wear fake tattoos? To use by challenging like the sponge Man ones? Joy, who was a 7'2", 350-pound professional kickboxer jose had no chance but i guess he really needed the money so he volunteered to get pummeled by one of the scariest people ever the fight lasted one minute and 17 seconds and honestly it could have been a lot worse jose said after the fight that it may have been his last but only a few months later he returned to the ring to fight todd the punisher Poulton. Who was basically just a random guy from Massachusetts who's known for fighting a few celebrity boxing matches and Let's go, Todd. A face tattoo. Fuck Holton yeah, Todd! Five ten and brought the entire five hundred person crowd to support him, but Canseco won this fight by decision. The Damn! Next year, Jose fought Gary he beat Hogan Todd? in Little He's Rock, unbeatable. Arkansas before an Arkansas Travelers AAA baseball game. Gary Hogan was a sixty-year-old man and an ex-baseball coach. He only weighed one hundred ninety-one pounds, but the fight ended in a draw. Again, it seems pretty clear. He just Jose fought some spectator at the fucking match. Canseco was scheduled to fight Billy Patton. Which one used the oldest one here? Florida. But when he took right, get your old ass in the ring. We're gonna fight. Enter the ring. They realized it wasn't Jose. He had sent his twin brother as a doppelganger to fight for him. Although this seems like something out of a movie, what? it really wasn't that abnormal for Jose, who is known for sending his brother to do autograph signings for him. The fighting promoter Damon Feldon sued Jose tier one for bug. $65. Five gift subs, Isaac. However, Thank the you, two would team up for another fight in 2016 Appreciate when it. Jose was scheduled to fight Lindsay Lohan's dad, but that never happened. Lindsay Lohan's Lenny dad? In 2011, but Lenny pulled out the last minute. And Who's was next? Macaulay who Culkin's butler? Party. From Jose 20 won years that ago? Fight after a bunch of women jumped into the ring and forced the referee to stop the match. Jose has since challenged Logan Paul, Jake Paul, Alex Rodriguez, and Shaq to fights. Shaq has said multiple times that he's willing to fight Jose anytime, anywhere, but that seems like it will never happen. Jose is currently scheduled to fight Barstool Sports employee Billy Football on February 21st, and we wish Jose the best of I'm luck. excited to Believe watch not, that now. is actually one of the more normal ways Canseco has earned himself Thanks money reset, and attention since retirement. He went on the Celebrity Apprentice in, the chat, in 2011 Don't donate and left to the show early because of the death of his dad, but did get $25,000 for his charity. 
Jose has also offered fans the opportunity to go Bigfoot and alien hunting with yep, him let's for do it. only $5,000. And this actually may be a pretty good deal because Jose does seem to have some insight on aliens. He's claimed that they are on Earth trying to communicate with us the secret... Aliens have been trying to teach us how to time travel, but first we have to change our body composition, which we are not willing to do. We have tried with animals and it has failed. Well, if anyone was close enough to changing their body composition to be on a time travel wavelength with aliens, it's probably Jose Canseco. His body is composed of like 10% water, 5% blood, and 85% steroids. So he's probably like knocking on the door, like on the cusp, I would, uh, I would imagine. I mean, I can't speak for the aliens and their technology, but you know method to time travel and that he's met an alien himself. Jose has also previously claimed that he was going to sell his finger on eBay for cash. This was a lie, but Jose did accidentally shoot off his finger in 2014 while cleaning one of his guns in his kitchen. Unfortunately, Holy it was shit. never put on sale. All of this went down on Jose's Twitter account, which is notoriously known for being one of the best in the business. He may have the wildest Twitter account that has yet to be banned. At one point, he proposed to his girlfriend on Twitter. She ignored him, so he called her a quote-unquote egotistical <laughs> and easy lay he posted <laughs> this is this is fucking wild he proposed to his girlfriend through twitter got left on red and then immediately just went on like the reddit nice guy shit you bitch how dare you wow Posted her phone number and her and her mother would later file a restraining order against Jose. Jose would go on to offer speed dating opportunities for his female followers as long as they send him an email with a picture and bio. Jose has also used Twitter to start a campaign to get the Mets to sign him. Thanks but at the time cheese. it seemed pretty clear that the MLB wanted nothing to do with Jose. However, in 2014, oh, the Athletics busy. were the first that's team to give Jose a chance, letting him back into the ballpark for a 1989 World Series reunion ceremony. Mark McGuire refused to show up because Canseco was there, but Jose apologized to McGuire anyway, and things worked out for Canseco. He was hired to be part of the Oakland broadcast team in 2017, but was asked not to return the next season after a series of tweets about sexual assault. And that's basically- What? Wow. I see the difference, I guess, because I was a good-looking guy and these politicians look like a bag of boogers. It's like something I'd hear as an insult in Codename Kids Next Door. This... wow. where Canseco stands today. He hasn't played a Major League Baseball game in 20 years, but somehow he's always stayed somewhat relevant. Whether he's testifying in front of Congress, hunting aliens, or boxing celebrities, he's always doing something, and it's usually something pretty strange. And that's what makes Jose Canseco an American hero. Yeah, uh, I mean... Nobody cares about you either, fat You got no balls, that's what you're gonna say to my face. This is crazy. Human feces. That was a lot more interesting than I thought it would be. This is the second baseball player that has the craziest fucking lore. What was, the, what was the other guy's name? Paul Hamburger or something super American? What was it? The guy we watched, watched last time? Thanks to the Prime Banjo and Risa Wilson. And the fat old tier 3 Banjo, Jesus. Well, thank you for that. Lenny Des uh, Lenny Dix Dixtra, type it again. What the fuck was his name? Lenny Dextra. Yeah. Lenny. He had a crazy history too. Man, maybe there really is some like fucking gold mines in sports. All right, let's watch Jose Canseco fight. Um, we'll do this one. I'll tell you what, Jose's got to move. He's got to circle. Ready. Know. He's the prime bunch yeah, bunter and recent decaf. The entire time he needs to stay circling with. Oh, Jose oh, goes for the overhand right immediately. And Jose's looking pretty clean. Using his angles. 
Hit on the inside, throw to the massive jawline of Choi and then get out of dodge. Everything right so far in the opening 20 seconds for Jose Canseco. Right now in this David vs. Goliath match, Jose Canseco looks to be doing very well. Canseco is 6 foot 4 and he looks like he's 5 foot 6. Why are you using 5 foot 6 as an insult? Don't say that again. Say 5 foot 5. Do not turn your back though. Oh, yeah. Tries for a jumping front kick off the lead leg, does Canseco, knowing that Choi only moves in straight lines and that Glacier's moved. I don't want to watch this anymore. <laughs> Gotta be careful of Choi's Muay Thai clinch and high knee that he has knocked out so many opponents with early on in his K1 career guy. Yeah, he does. Oh, Ooh. He, just ran into a jab. he ate that one. He didn't get hit with a hard shot and I heard it. I tell you, what, Jose's doing a good job, though. He's throwing that bit. He's got to get away from that crazy stuff there. That's if he bleeds on his opponent, he's going to be right testing right. positive for steroids for a year. I'm going to say, cerebral fight so far. He's kind of got like a, a poison debuff built into his body with all the steroids. Oh, boy. Yeah, that'll do it. It was always going to be over as soon as Joy was on top of him. Jose. All right, 0-1, but I'm sure he gets it going here. What about when he fought some baseball fan's dad? Is there any audio? Uh, no audio. That's his twin. Oh, right, right, right. He had his twin step in for this fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We just learned that. Oh, I don't want to see his twin fight. That's not interesting. Oh, this is when he fought Todd the Punisher. Let's go, Jose! No one's ever fought Todd and lived to tell the tale. Yeah, we'll do the bar stool one next. See how he fared against the intern. Let's go, Todd! There's a good sub shadow. Has Todd ever fought before? Ever? Even, like, by accident one time? This isn't looking good. I think he's a prime Maxwell. Let's go, Todd! This is where we make our comeback. He's going for the Rhino Charge. Come on, Todd! Oh. Todd's just toying with them before he ends it all. He's about to put this match to bed. Thanks for giving some bread. Maybe in a minute, JK. Ugh. Boo is right. Not very good. And we already know Jose wins that fight. How about the bar stool guy? You got TKO'd by Barstool Sports intern Billy Football. 46 minutes. Don't want to watch 46 minutes of it. How about from this channel, Fittest Gamers? <laughs> okay. Not the DMCA waiting to happen. <clears throat> Damn, Billy football's feeling it. Oh, is that the whole fight? So he really did just take a full on dive, huh? That's a shame. Well, hey, easy money for Jose Canseco, I guess. 
All the 90s juicer baseball players got into crazy antics. Conseco, Bonds, Sosa, Bagwell, Ivan, and Clemens. I'm going to try and remember those names. I think only one baseball player per just chatting night, I would say. Because now Lenny and Jose, I'm convinced these baseball players have got some fucking good meat. Like, there is some content there. The most bullied player in baseball. Oh. I don't know who that is, but I feel bad for him now. Thanks to the Prime Deo. He's a cheater? Oh, okay. Fuck him then. He cheated to win the world? Fuck! These all sound so interesting. Okay, well, one more baseball player. Are you starting to feel s bad for Altuve? I am. Even if he Thanks did cheat, and touch. that's the reason he's so uh -huh. I still am. Make sure player of him does. sitting in the stands alone. <laughs> Man. Yeah. Tough times for Altuve so, right now. That's... Um, the breaking ball numbers look bad right now. Oh, yeah. That graph is pretty funny. The swing and miss at breaking ball is like... I'm not a mathematician. Don't show me graphs. Thanks for the resub draw. I just, whenever you see a guy going through that, he probably doesn't have many people to talk to. But I, 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 I mean, he deserves it all. Hey, you don't know what's coming. We got your trash kid. So what did he do? 27 Jose Altuve. <laughs> Boo, it sounds like when Artifact was announced. No, not, uh, you know, not really. Let's see the tattoo! Jose! Where's the tattoo? Jose! But not finger specific. Oh my gosh, Jose Altuve. Ooh. He was one of the worst, if not the worst, defensive second baseman in the league this year. Hey, Correa, it's going to be Altuve. He oh, it. you idiot. You blew it. Ranges to his right, flips, and that's off the mark. Takes off out in the grass on Tube. So is he bullied because he's shitty, or like, what's up with that? Pulls one into that shift. Throws <laughs> second and a back throw on Tube. And another throwing error. Jose Altuve is having such a difficult time. Jose Altuve, you have to say it out loud. He kind of blew this game. He is not happy about it. Not to tear your shirt. Why? Not a liar is. A liar does three things All right, when so you what ask did he them do? a question. One, they ask you to repeat it. Okay, now I have to be caught up on the lore. God damn it. Oh, is it like a conspiracy or something? There's a prime neon. Thanks to the resub cannoli. Hey, man. Yeah, fuck yeah. Back to back for the lightning. Let's go. So what am I looking for? This ball is crushed to left. Wow, that was loud. There's a tier one Joker, Baby Peach in the prime, Geo and Risa Robert. Well, this is underwhelming. I'm going to resub Pazzo. I'm just going to look it up real quick. God, this is not even fun to look at. So it sounds like they just used the 
like the drums there to signal what pitch was coming. They hit a trash can to tell what sign the pitcher was doing. So why is that specific to Jose Altuve? <clears throat> he had a buzzer under his shirt. What does the buzzer mean? Is it like one of those vibrator things? It was a team effort. It made his nipples hard. <laughs> so it sounds like it was a whole team effort. So I don't know why uh, it's exclusive to him. Jose, 2017. Yeah. Did you guys know what you were doing with Ron? <laughs> yeah, kind of. You know, and that's why we feel bad. And, you know, I'm not going to say to you that it was, it was good. It was wrong. You know, but we feel bad. Okay. Not as cool as I thought that would be. Definitely no Jose Canseco. All right. I probably can't watch any of these, to be honest. Especially if someone's, like, in danger of getting hurt. Alright, what next? Yeah, actually, you know what? I know what to do next. Let's watch the slapping. Punchdown 4 started today. There's two fights for free that were posted on Punchdown. The rest was pay-per-view. And they'll be up at some point. So let's watch the free fights, baby. Who do we got in the bracket? Please tell me Artur is here. The Wolfman, RP, is alive and well. No Artur. No Artur. Is Zalesh here? I don't see Zalesh. Turbo Joker. I can understand that word. That one's not Polish. That's an Xbox Live gamer tag. I figured Vasily would be sitting this one out, but I thought Zalesh would fight. But it looks not like he's not. Thanks to the five gift subs, little, little beags. Appreciate it. All right. Contra Max. Yeah. <laughs> Well, let's see what new legends will be born in the Crucible this time. I love the production. I feel like I'm at Universal right now. Or Disney World. But it's better because there's slaps here. Witamy Państwa serdecznie na gali Punchdown 4. Dzisiaj będziecie mogli zobaczyć aż 20 ekscytujących pojedynków w tym pięciu yep, they made the table smaller. It's huge. It'll be good. That'll be a good change. Turniej, który tak Państwo uwielbiacie. Bohaterowie Makes turniej the będą musieli stoczyć co najmniej trzy pojedynki, nut. żeby móc zwyciężyć główną nagrodę 40 tysięcy złotych. Na pewno czekają nas ogromne emocje, o czym doskonale przekonaliście się już przy poprzednich edycjach. Czas rozpocząć punchdown, a to oznacza, że czas poznać sędziów. Pan Jacek Grzepelski oraz pan Karol Matuszczak. Zapraszam Let's serdecznie. Let's go! Oh wait, these are the refs. Yeah, oh fuck yeah! Let's go! They should have a referee slapping match. Oh, they have like a whole little action movie scene planned out here. Something out of John Wick. 
czwartym YouTubie po dwóch pierwszych walkach gale będzie można oglądać tylko i wyłącznie w systemie pay per view tak więc zapraszamy państwa serdecznie ale tutaj wszyscy czekają już tylko na grzmoty tak więc nie przedłużamy czas na pierwsze starcie pierwszy zawodnik proszony do stołu kostrześ We have not seen this guy before. A przeciwnikiem Kostrzesia będzie Treniu. Tra Treniu. Kasz Treniu Markowski, 37-latek z okolic Rogowa kontra 10 lat młodszy zawodnik pochodzący z Nidzicy. 20 kg różnicy wagowej, e, wzrost tylko 8 cm. The Viking is getting slapped first, all right? Wpływu. Na to, jak Let's see what this guy's got. I... Oh, getting right into it! Jesus Christ! Wow, okay. We're moving at a very fast pace. This is a five gift subs grievous. Thank you, man. He has given me the decision. Oh, yeah, yeah. Since this is... I don't usually like going full screen because it throws off the ratio, but... Yeah, since there is a live chat there, it might be safer. Exit prime chop. No i teraz kolejna młodszego zawodnika o 10 lat od Kostrzesia. Teraz będzie uderzał Treniu. Zobaczymy, czy młody Let's see if it back. stary wkurzony. O, oh, okej. Okay. I dostał, dostał Kostrześ, ale nie, już widzimy, że... That nie bad. ...potrzebował nawet tych 30 sekund, żeby dojść do siebie, bo już te, również naciera te ręce i za chwilę będziemy świadkami drugiej... They're going pojedynek. really fast. Przypomnę, pierwszy pojedynek czwartej gali Punchdown Dwa pierwsze pojedynki na otwartym YouTubie. Reszta pojedynków dostępna w systemie pay per view. Także kto jeszcze nie wykupił, zapraszamy bardzo serdecznie. <laughs> His fucking hair stood up so high after that slap. What did he do? Like rub his hands in his ass crack and get some static electricity going before slapping him? Why did his hair stand up so high? It's still standing. Is there like a balloon above the stage that's drawing it to it or something? He didn't follow through at all. It was just like a little love tap. I thought he was going to lean over and kiss him on the cheek afterward. What are you doing? Guy looks like a Viking, but on the inside, he's just here for some love. Oh, now he's just afraid. Yes, yes. Oh, ouch! Oh, fuck! Exit tier one, Chewy. The reset subject. Uh oh, he's leaking. Nosebleed. The blood will make him stronger. It will awaken that ancient Norse fury. Come on now. Don't be shy. That is horrible. What is going on? Well, I think we know who won here. Zobaczmy, jaki będzie werdykt. His heart did not seem to be in it. Czekamy teraz na oficjalną decyzję sędziowską. Zwycięzcy Karol Matuszczak ustalają, który wygrał, a panowie na sportowo zbijają pionę. O to chodzi. I've heard a soda can pop louder than that last slap. I think he's new to the sport. He's 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 warming up. Nice work, Kostchev. Wielkie brawa dla Kostrzesia, a teraz zobaczmy najlepsze powtórki. These are five gift subs codes. Gladiatora. This guy's name is Gladiatora. Oh, Gladiator. That just must be how you say it in Polish. And would make up for it in skill and curiosity.
drugi pojedynek czwartej gali punchdown. Adrian Gladiator, Adrian Gladiator Smykowski kontra Grzegorz Brzytwa Smoliński. Zawodnik znany z drugiej edycji punchdowna, oh gdzie God. jak sam twierdzi niesłusznie odpadł w pojedynku z Moto Moto. Teraz ma okazję This guy is built temu, like Brian Shaw, but smaller. I pokazać tą swoją siłę i tą twardą głowę, o której Jesus wspominał Christ. zaraz po zakończeniu drugiej edycji. I czy udowodni tym razem, że jego His neck has like 15 layers of meat to get through. It's like a vault door. Widzimy, że już szykuje się. There's no way this guy gets knocked out. Zobaczmy, jakie będzie ale poszło. Było dosyć mocne, ale tutaj Secret Whirlwind Jutsu. Pokazał, że że potrafi też przyjąć, no ale to możemy się tego spodziewać. Jest to chłopak, What the fuck was that technique? I love it. Na gołe pięści w takich organizacjach jak hey, Gotta Cyclone. Ziomka, więc na pewno tę głowę ma twardą. Brał też udział w Formosa Challenge, czyli w biegu survivalowym, gdzie zajął 31 miejsce, co wydaje mi się It didn't jak seem very strong. Bardzo dobrym jak na zawodnika, jak na amatora, można powiedzieć. I also thought he was just stretching out. Ten gladiator zbyt goszczy. Czy będzie w stanie posłać swojego? Good luck knocking this guy out. It's like slapping a turtle shell. Yeah. Chyba, chyba mu nie wyszło to uderzenie. There was a flinch there, though, to be fair. Trzymał tą rękę. Nie wiem, co się wydarzyło teraz. Tak, tak, jakoś tak dziwnie, dziwnie się zamachnął. Nie wiem, że dwa chyba też się nie spodziewał. Is he going to use the sprinkler technique again? I wonder. No way he does it twice. Chwilę będziemy świętowali to gladiatora. Really appreciate it. Teraz więcej szans nasz sponsor you, daje brzytwie. Zobaczymy teraz czym, czym nas zaskoczy i czy nas zaskoczy przede wszystkim. He's doing it again. Uh oh. Uh oh. When's it coming? Cios tej brzytwy. Oh. Oj, teraz chyba miałem wrażenie, że troszeczkę się odsunął. Those slaps are not very strong. Sędziowie, sędziowie skrupulatnie zanotują, jeżeli coś takiego miało miejsce. I love the technique though. Mamy I do czas, like that. Turning it into a whole interpretive dance. Wydaje mi się, że gladiator nie będzie, nie będzie But I think it's sapping some of the power. Nie będzie, będzie w stanie kontynuować ten pojedynek, aczkolwiek taki to, to uderzenie tak jakby troszeczkę palcami go, palcami tak, go przytwa może przejechał. To być, może być skutek tego właśnie małego odchylenia. Please give some tomatoes. Co tutaj, jaką decyzję podejmą? He builds momentum. He's going for that like natural elasticity of the body or something in the kinetic chain, and it's not working. I czy tym razem będzie mocniej? Nie. No też, też jakoś, jakoś tak nie, nie zbyt, nie zbyt czysto, nie zbyt mocno. That was a pretty good slap. Gladiators not bad. Niki siły. Mówiąc zupełnie, zupełnie subiektywnie z mojej, z mojej perspektywy, wydaje mi się, że w tej chwili brzytwa jest na prowadzeniu. Thanks to Rusev Adam. Były mocniejsze i i też widzimy to w odzwierciedleniu w kursach bukmacherskich. No i być może przy tym trzecim ciosie potwierdzi to i i pośle. Oh, he's not doing the spinning technique anymore. Przymierza się. Yeah, see, that is a lot more effective. Significantly. Ale pokazał gladiator jest ok, także panowie kontynuują. But I like trying new things. I appreciate that. Też widzimy jak. But if you're going for the dub ski, maybe just stick with the tried and true methods. Który jest dany te z tego czasu 30 sekund. Nie jest go wiele, ale wykorzystuje go. Jest to na pewno zmiana na plus. The table is a lot smaller. The table is like literally 50% smaller. It's no different than the barrel from Slap Fight Championship now. So that'll no longer be a factor. Tak, tak. A teraz nie jesteś w stanie stanąć do stołu po tych 30 sekundach, no to dokładnie sędziowie orzekają twoją porażkę. No zobaczymy. Czy trzeci cios gladiatora? No troszeczkę mocniejszy był. He didn't flinch on that one. That's good. W okolice oka, But he looked very gdzieś, scared ale, again. Ale on pokazał, że wszystko jest ok i. I'm pretty Daje sure się, Gladiator wins. Mieli werdykt sędziowski, chociaż jeszcze Jacek Grzebecki z Karolem Matuszkiem. Those are very fast. Holy shit! I za chwilę dowiemy się, czy będzie nam potrzebna jeszcze dodatkowa. That went by so quick. Werdykt. I think maybe five rounds might be better, especially at this pace. Zwycięzcy tego starcia, sędziowie jeszcze się naradzają. Jest dobrze? Nie, yeah, Gladiator. Bardzo fajnie, tylko w trochę ciekawszym języku. There's a huge Panowie three, sędziowie, three, kto zwyciężył ten pojedynek? Czy mamy werdykt jednogłośny? Tak więc zwycięzcą zostaje... Brzytwa! O, oh, wow! Gratulujemy zwycięzcom! Even with all that flinching, like he was straight up trembling on some of the slaps. Really? Pay per view. A teraz zobaczmy najlepsze urywki tego starcia. I'm shocked.
Well, we get to see more crazy techniques from him moving forward, I guess. Yeah, I really thought Gladiator was going to take that one. Okay. Yeah, so Punch Down 4 was today. These were the first two fights which they did on YouTube for free and then it went to pay-per-view. Unfortunately, I had the Destiny 2 raid today so I couldn't watch it. But we'll just watch it as the videos get posted up on YouTube. Same thing we did with Punch Down 3. Pretty good though. Pretty solid opening. It is a little disappointing to not have Zalesh or Vasily in it, but I think that makes room for new competitors to arise. Actually, the huge 10 gift subs as well, Bladed. Thank you for the massive tier 3 and the big 10 drop, man. Thank you. And thank you for the bits only fox and the dollar limits. And happy late birthday, Luminari, or Lumari and the resub Yoshi. And the prime ducky and resub C4. And the gift sub Chewy. And thank you for the bits, Billiam and Jason. The biggest Little League cheating scandal. Fuck. No, no, no more, no more sports shit. He's a tier one shady. The resub plar. Malice in the Palace is the craziest sports fight of all time. It's the main reason games don't serve glass bottles anymore. Probably can't watch that. <clears throat> is slapping a sport? It is now, baby. It's the best fucking sport. You can. Oh, I've seen this. I have seen this. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've watched this. It's not really like a fun video to watch, though. It's just chaos. It's just straight up fucking chaos. I didn't remember it being called Malice in the Palace, though. I also thought it was a lot earlier than 2004. Thanks to the gifts of BRD and Golden Hybrid and the resub Fiani and Plar. Hope you're doing well, BRD. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I can show a little bit. Well, all five starters and double figures. And the Patriots have played a very intelligent game tonight. And Wallace is fouled, and Wallace did. Oh, Wallace, right at our chest. This has potential to be serious if they don't get between. Wallace upset. Players trying to hold each other off. Steven Jackson and Rasheed Wallace trying to be. This is only part one here. It gets wild. It gets pretty goofy pretty quick. Look at these tough guys. Yeah, I remember this too. It's been a long time since I've seen it. The problem is, if Wallace is ejected, I'm not sure. He'd have to walk past the pace of bench to go. Now our test has jumped over the scorer's table and is trying to get down to the bench. Yeah. Our test is in the stands. Oh, this is awful. Fans oh. Stephen Jackson's in the fans. Rasheed Wallace going in. Damn, that was a huge blast. The security trying to somehow restore order. I'm pretty, if I remember correctly, the guy Ron Artest charged is a high school student. I think I remember reading that. Yeah, let the fan play! Oh, whoa! Fans are throwing cups with liquid in them now onto the court. Ron Artest has a look in his eye that's very scary right now. Ron Artest changed his name to um, some, what is it, something world peace. You wonder if the pitch is gonna Ron Artest was pretty wild. He had a cool story. Meta world peace, that's what it is. 
They're trying to get the Pacers to go back to the locker room. What was maybe you could call it a hard foul. And they're still just somebody could really get hurt. It's a bad showing from the Piston stands here. Just firing bottles from the stands. The Pacers have all gone back. Who ended up winning this series? Was it the Pacers? They're getting thrown a lot of debris, and they're still not all the way through. And for some reason, one of the Pacers, they hold Austin Cole. Pistons, okay. They're going to get under the tunnel because they're afraid for This was safety. regular season? No, it's not. What a disgrace for showing from the Pistons fans here. All those expensive suits ruined. Ruined! That's one of the worst scenes I've ever seen. It's an NBA moment. moment in NBA history. The players just have to get out of there. Get back to the locker room and forget about it. Thanks, Drew. You said the chaos catalyst in the tier the one racing in the prime the for that. Has been made. The game has been called, which was the right call. The outcome, obviously, is over. And players... Do they have the replay? It started with a beer being thrown, I think. ...on him from Artest, who had been lying down, even after Ben Wallace had thrown a towel at him. Where is it? Stephen Jackson in there... This became such a dangerous situation. They see Steven Jackson in there taking shot at the stands. Yeah, I don't think it's in the replay. It's I think it started with someone throwing a beer bottle. He got jailed for it? Who did? The fan that threw the beer bottle? Have you seen Jason Mayhem Miller from Bully Beatdown? He's a prime Ringo. I actually just recently learned Bully Beatdown was all fake. Like, the fights were real, but they, the stories and all that wasn't. Which kind of sucked. There's the resub Warlord Brexit. The man who thinks he's Jesus. Okay. <laughs> Whatever. Siberian cult leader thinks he's Jesus. Well, this is old vice, so it actually might not be dog shit, but I don't really want to watch 25 minutes of it either. They're all too long. And then this is just a classic. Thanks to Reset Finsky. If Jesus did come back, he would probably be on a Vice video as a fraud. I mean, maybe, probably. Here's the resub Gina. I know the whole cuffy thing. The barking dog chemistry experiment. What is that like your homework assignment or something? 10 foot barking dog. Periodic table of videos. We've been cleaning out a lab so that it can be refurbished so we can teach Exit our students Prime, better. Thomasol. And hidden at the back, we found a really long tube jab. which Pete Lysons had had made to do the barking dog experiment, our favorite experiment. But he'd found that it was a bit awkward to use in lectures, so it'd been forgotten. Barking dogs are usually done in quite a short tube. 
Whoa! We're out of match. Bit over a metre long, and this one is seriously long. Probably three or even four metres long. So you probably all remember, because you've seen it lots of times on our Thanks videos, is the reaction of carbon disulfide with N2O, nitrous oxide. And we've got our barking dog ready to go. Let's see if it barks. So you fill the tube That's with some nitrous Star oxide Wars shit. gas, add some but water, what does it teach us? then you pour in carbon disulfide that's a liquid, and then you shake the tube and the water mixes everything up and a good mix so you can ensure that we get all of that carbon dioxide going into the vapor phase so it'll react really quite quickly with that oxygen. Nothing, the it's just cool. So the water, as you turn the tube, sloshes up and down and acts rather like a piston to help mix the carbon disulfide, which is evaporating, with the N2O so you get a gas phase mixture. And of course, the more you shake it, all being well, the better it's mixed. So it's just supposed to be cool, that's all. I respect it. So with the first one we tried, what happened was that we were in a bit of a hurry and I don't think perhaps we mixed it well enough. She's gonna bark. Oh. Because what happened was that when the tube was lit, the first 30 centimetres or so lit up and the flame was almost stationary. Neil had time to walk away from the experiment. Was he supposed to and die in it or something? Slowly, what do you mean? That's probably a good thing. The flame started accelerating down the tube. And then surprisingly in the middle, it almost stopped. Might have even gone up a bit. And then it went... Well, that's a pretty cool dog. Fuck yeah. I guess it's just so supposed to look cool. I don't know. Thanks to the resub monkey. <sighs> TikTok versus YouTube press conference. No. I will shut that shit down. I couldn't give a fuck less about that. But if something goofy or cool happens during it, that'll be nice. Sepik Takara is pretty cool, but not really like super fun for a YouTube night. But it is a cool sport. Look up dog shits. You need some help, man. Kinto Bento hasn't released part two yet. More Kabaddi slapping. Mm. We watched most of their more recent slapping fights. So maybe we'll just wait. Let them get more. <clears throat> Time for sushi. Oh, this is one of those wacky 3D animations. Barely sociable. Do they have something new? Thanks to the two gift subs, Duffy, and the Prime Freddy Fazcole. Watch the SOS video. Sure. Let me fill up my water real quick, though. I will be right back. And thank you for the five gift subs, Llama. Thank you.
That sounds cute, Peter, but probably no defunct plan tonight. Thanks again, Mama. Give me one minute. I'm back, team. Thanks for the resub. Amir in the prime. Murda. 
Toyota Pinto or Toyota Sprinter in the Prime Mech or the Resub Mech and Car Loaded. I I I already watched the whole coffee thing step ladder. Next to the Prime Lettuce. <clears throat> After a year like 2020, the idea of taking a nice hike and getting away from it all has definitely been an enticing prospect. But after looking Glad into like today's it, topic, I sort of have mixed feelings. And as I'm sure many of you know, countless hikers go missing in a wide variety of bizarre and mysterious circumstances. Not to deter you from taking that hike, as we all know Mother Nature can be unforgiving. But that being said, today's topic There's should put into perspective just how little we know about the disturbing events that truly unfold when people find themselves away from civilization. The world is both Blackman. so small that crazy coincidences can occur, but also too large that we often don't find what we're looking for. And that being said, Recept this Denomo. is the true story of the SOS incident. Now you think it's a dirty mess. Oh, cassette tape, eh? There's another one, dirty. On July 24th, 1989, two men had gone missing from Daisetsuan National Park in Japan. And shortly after, the search had begun, spanning the area surrounding Mount Asai Dake. And a helicopter had begun searching throughout the day. As the day had come to a close, out of the corner of their eye, the rescue crew had noticed something down below. Skunk Gabe. If it wasn't apparent from the oh. footage already, there was an SOS signal that was visible from the sky, measuring in at 18 meters in length and 5 meters tall, what did they made use? out of various precisely cut birch trees. Nice. This sign was found about 4 kilometers south of the summit of Mount Saidaki, where there was no trail and people rarely ever veered towards that location. Seeing this as a clear call for help, the local police landed and patrolled the area in order to investigate, and as it would turn out, just a kilometer or so north, the hikers ended up walking out of the woods and were rescued. Shortly oh, after, almost everything was back to normal, and when the hikers were easy. debriefed on the situation, they had been told had it not been for that SOS sign, rescuing them would have been a hell of a lot more difficult. Oh, they didn't place when it the though. the hikers were told this, they were puzzled because they had never created any SOS sign. In fact, they <gasps> had no Christ. idea what the police were even talking about, making their initial rescue an insane coincidence that would lead investigators down an entirely separate mystery. Because if they never made that sign, who did? Aliens. Thanks to the recent paradox. The next day, police dispatched a second search. The new efforts yielded some very interesting findings. For one, the most notable finding was an entirely separate human pile of bones. What? And this human skeleton was found 10 to 30 meters around the area of where the SOS sign was. To note some of the condition of the bones there, some of them had gnaw marks on them, likely due to wild animals in the area, and some of the bones were broken as well, indicating that whoever this was may have undergone some major injury. However, this wasn't the only thing found in the second surge, and about 165 feet north of the sign, buried in a hole just large enough to fit a single human, under some tree roots, a backpack was found containing three cassette tapes, a Sony tape recorder, as well as some basic toiletries and other supplies. After some time, the bones were collected and then later sent to the Ashikawa Medical University, who later declared that the bones belonged to a woman with a blood type of O. This left the uh, investigation that, There's only one person that fits that description. they recognized that none of the items found in that hole under the tree roots had seemed to correspond with anything belonging to a woman. And to convolute things even further, out of the things that were found on the tapes for the Sony cassette player, two of them were soundtracks for anime, and the other one had been recorded Anime's over, evil. leaving a disturbing message with a man's voice on it.
Why would he record that though? It doesn't make much sense. Is the shingles decker of shingles? Continuously replay it, but it wouldn't be that loud. Now, what's apparent here is that this person is calling for help, and the Thanks literal translation Robin. reads, I can't move, I'm on the cliff, SOS, help me. I can't move on the cliff. SOS, help me. The place is where I met the first helicopter. I can't go up deeply, Sasa. Lift me up from here. Now, I apologize if the translation is a bit rough. However, this person appears to be calling for help on a cliff. And in case you're unfamiliar with what Sasa is, it is a type of dense bamboo, which makes the context of this recording even more confusing. Because this person appears to be on a cliffside in this recording, however, this was found in the lower trenches of a valley. Continuing on, one item that was found that I haven't mentioned yet in that pile of belongings was an ID card of a hiker that had gone missing about five years prior. And this man's Holy name shit. was Kenji Iwamura. I will note that finding anything definitive on Mr. Iwamura or the circumstances surrounding his disappearance is incredibly difficult. The Japanese reporting on the situation redacts his name in every public mention of this case, and only a single story from the Associated Press at the time this event took place in an American newspaper even bothers to name him. All I can say definitively about this guy is that he liked anime, he was an office worker, and he was staying at a hostel, and it seems the only reason people knew he went missing was because he didn't show up for work a week later. As a result of this man's name being redacted, there's so many different versions of the story and the victim that it becomes borderline frustrating. Some sites on this case will mention that he had become an outdoorsy type in his Well, he last probably months. made the SOS Other sign too, Websites then. will mention that he wasn't the type of person to go for a hike alone. Drafty. And even other tellings of the story mention that the man was celebrating a promotion at work and decided to treat himself to a trip up the mountain. But ultimately, if you dig back in newspaper archives, you will get one disturbing detail that is left out everywhere else and only told in the American side of reporting. The Associated Press had reported at the time this occurred that when they had reached out to the family of Iwamura, they confirmed that the backpack was in fact his. But get this, they were not so sure about who the person on the recording was. Oh. And they could not say that that was their son. So we have well, a pile of bones, a missing hiker's Maybe that backpack, has to do with the quality the recording of the recording, from another though. person asking for help in that backpack, and an SOS sign made out of birch trees that was somehow made by a person who may or may not have had broken bones at the time of the sign's Thank creation. You, not to mention these trees were cut, swifty. however, there was no axe or anything of the sort that could be found in the local area. So naturally, you have to ask, what the hell happened on this mountainside? This is very interesting. Yeah, what the fuck? He, like, how would they have cut down the birch trees well, to do that? after some time, only a few of those questions can really be answered. The first course of action was to figure out what time that sign appeared. I guess they could punch the tree like in Minecraft or something. The local that on the 28th, it was found that the letters SOS were reflected in the aerial photograph taken by the Forestry Agency in the Geospatial Information Authority of Japan on September 20th, 1987. A possible map, woodchuck? This photo was taken from a point about yeah, 3,700 sure meters that. above the sky. In the photo, the width of the letters SOS is about 0.9 millimeters. The first S is a little unclear and difficult to understand, but the last S can be confirmed. It's barely noticeable in the photo, but it's clear to the naked eye. The agency and others that take aerial photographs take it every five years. Keep in mind this was roughly translated, and I did look for the specific photo that they're referring to, but I don't know if this was released publicly. But this does mean that the sign was potentially undetected for some time past in 1982. And while this seems to match up with the timeline of Thank Mr. You, Mora, what couldn't be explained at the time was the woman's bones that were found. As a result, the remains were reassessed by the Ashikawa Medical University, and they had later come out and stated that they had made a mistake, and the bones instead belonged to a male with a blood type of A. Uh. This was enough for investigators to deduce that this was Mr. Iwamura, and with no deliberate Thank signs of foul bones. play, the case was closed. However, that's not to say that all of our questions could be fully In answered. Amarok. And to say that we're missing a few details regarding the situation is a bit of an understatement. 
So let me start to break down what law enforcement believed happened, and you'll start to fully understand how none of it makes sense. Here is a map of the hiking area and the mountain, and it's believed that he hiked up from the ropeway along the ridge line. This hike isn't very long or particularly advanced by any means. Now, the only thing you really have to pay attention to on this hike are the two landmarks that let you know when you cross over this ridge line. That main landmark is the safe rock, which looks like this. However, there is another rock along this ridge that looks deceptively similar, and that is the fake safe rock, to which two <laughs> hikers from the beginning of the story made the same mistake. Let's just remove the fake safe rock then. North of the SOS sign. As a result of this incident, they ended up putting up ropes to prevent this from happening. But yeah, the I, I think so. This. However, Good our idea. guy is believed to have taken the wrong safe rock as well and trekked along the hill haphazardly until he wandered some time down into the marsh. And based Thanks on my look on the Japanese Juju discussions the on this wizard. topic, many people are quick to point out that had he simply followed the river and walked along the edges, he was only about nine or so miles away from civilization. The terrain definitely wasn't the easiest, and it's definitely some place that people can get lost. However, the fact that he decided to dedicate his time and energy to cutting down trees is another mystery, especially when you factor the geography here really only gave him one direction that he could head, and that was downhill. But I digress, and now that you sort of have a lay of the land, we can start to get into the nitty gritty in regards to the rest of the bizarre details of this case. Always follow the river. Yeah, that always seems so to be let's like start with the recording. good advice. Like I said, it's really bizarre that the parents weren't certain that that was their son on the recording. And I've yet to find any amendment to this initial statement. You'd think that a parent would be able to recognize their son's voice without much hesitation. But it is worth considering that this only appears in the American reporting of the situation. And perhaps they didn't get all of the details right. In this initial article, it appears they didn't even get his age right. However, I will note... It is actually quite common for initial reports on subject matter to get the age wrong Thanks, because story. everyone is rushing to get the story. Which way out. though? Does but it matter? I guess as good as mine regarding the other details. And something to consider mm. is and if probably Omar downstream, wasn't right? on this recording, is it possible that he met someone on the way up to the mountain? And to tell you the truth, the evidence doesn't point to Iramora making this sign by himself. In fact, the person who did the autopsy on this case stated that he wasn't even physically capable of doing it solo. Now, you might be thinking, well, aren't birch trees super flimsy? And not exactly. I selected this video to show you because this tree has roughly the same diameter as many of the other trees that were found there. And keep in mind that the tree he's cutting isn't birch, and birch is a hardwood. Same thing. Yeah, birch is typically an advanced wood. You need a high wood cutting level. And I already mentioned this, but he never brought an axe with him or a knife, so it wasn't even fully clear how 19 birch trees were chopped and moved 100 meters into the clearing. Moreover, the skeleton was found fractured on the left shoulder and right leg. If we are going to argue that he made the SOS signal, we sort of have to make the argument that he got these injuries after animals got to him. And even if he somehow managed to do this while injured, where did the axe come from, what happened to it, and why wasn't it found with his belongings? I will note no other records show he was with anyone during any of his travels, and no other reported persons went missing in the park during this time. But that's not to say something like this couldn't go unreported. And furthermore, you have to ask, if this guy had the strength to build an SOS sign, why wasn't he able to go down the mountain? Like I said, this area isn't super remote. In fact, where he was located basically only gave him the option to follow the river that leads directly to civilization at around eight and a half miles or so. Now, once again, you could say Maybe he just liked the bones so he couldn't go down the river. And while I totally understand that people with their life at risk probably aren't going to be thinking 100% clearly, the fact that police closed this investigation without understanding what happened to the axe is sort of questionable. This mystery has a catch-22 at almost every single theory. And usually when you have situations like that, you're missing some details. And five plus years of this site being left to the elements doesn't help either. So things can easily go missing. Perhaps there's more to the site that's waiting probably to be could meet. Getting back to the recording, however, many people have theorized that the man may have used a cassette player as a way of calling for help if he was out of breath and lost his voice. After all, the battery would outlast you yelling. However, one thing that some of the people on the Japanese side of discussion have pointed out is that there's almost no background noise on the recording. That is a good point. I would assume that someone yelling for help on a cliffside 
might result in a little bit more reverb or wind or even the helicopter that he's referring to in the background. That's a really good point. But there really isn't anything of the sort. Speaking of that helicopter mentioned in the recording, it does appear that police searched for Iwamura, and as far as the recording also mentioning Sasa, that can be found growing sideways along the improper trail with the fake rock. But just like everything else with this case, we're not 100% certain this is what's being referred to in the recording. Sasa can be found in a variety of locations throughout the park, and perhaps this helicopter being referred to on the mysterious message wasn't even the particular search helicopter searching for Iwamura, and just another passerby. I can imagine that if you were stranded out in the middle of nowhere and you saw a helicopter, you'd probably have proper bias to think that that was coming to look for you. So once again, it's hard to be sure. What I can say for certain about this topic is that it really leaves a lot of room for interpretation, and I'd love to know what you guys have to say down in the comments. Personally, I think the biggest gap in the how story is the, the missing trees? tool used to cut down the trees. And given how police rushed to close this case in a week, definitely seems like some details are missing. When it comes to the great outdoors, if there's something I've learned, is that only Mother Nature knows the full extent. Thanks to the five gifts of Seaman and the Reese really social. Webry. Have a good night. That was a lot more mysterious and interesting than I thought it would be. I don't think it'd be like a murder cover-up, though. Why the fuck would the murderer make an SOS sign? Okay. He's dead, and now I want to make sure it looks like an accident. Oh, I'll chop down 19 birch trees with an SOS sign. I'll record an SOS message on his cassette player. It's foolproof. Like, it's not a very good idea as, like, a murder cover-up. I think the most likely explanation is he did have some, or found, or made some tool to cut down the trees... And his best idea was to make an SOS sign because he didn't know what else to do. And I think while doing that, he hurt himself. That's kind of what I think happened. At least he gives Tori. Where's the tool though? If it's a tool he made... Over the course of five years, it could have deteriorated, right? Like, if he made it out of, like, a rock and sticks and shit, an animal could have absolutely, like, chewed on the sticks and broken it or something. That is very interesting. You're overthinking. I can't think of anything else, though. Like, how, how did he make an SOS sign? That's the thing I'm hung up on. That is not easy to cut down a tree. I tried cutting through a small log with a massive axe and couldn't get fully through in like 15 swings. And neither could Matt. Like it takes a lot. And that wasn't even hardwood. Let me see the tier one Belilos. Missing 411 National Park theories. So, what am I looking for? Missing hiker found tied to a tree. This is five gifts of fire boy. Thank you. Oh, this guy definitely sounds like a anime writer. Someone took him out there and acted like they were lost, got him to help with the SOS and recording, and then killed him with the axe they used for the trees. That is genuinely some like anime manga type plot there. Kinda of big brain. Kinda of fucking big brain. But if that was the case, then the recording, he would have mentioned someone else. He would have said, we're lost, we need help. Thanks to the Prime, Zada Lube, and Porty. Yeah, Tiana's been watching Fruit Basket. She says it's good. 
It wasn't his voice, though. Well, that's not confirmed that it wasn't his voice. You said the... <sighs> Which one did you say was good as well? That was pretty interesting. Dark Side of Silk Road I'm familiar with. I'm not going to watch the whole video though. Thanks to the Resub Herald. The Bitcoin one is great. Unmasking Satoshi Nakamoto. It's a little long. Hey, thank you, Ryan. Appreciate it. No, no Darman tonight. Maybe there were some old trees. Even still, though, I mean, you can't just cut them down with your fists. It's the second time I've seen that tonight. Let's see. <clears throat> what am I looking for? Man, that is some patriotic shit in that profile pic. Top three photos with disturbing backstories, part 21. Thanks to the resub withers. Three times that Fortnite was scary. Don't tell me that's one of his videos. Hey, let me see. Where is it? So which one? I'll watch one, but what? I actually hate the thumbnails. He's playing the YouTube game. Red circle, red arrow. That's all it takes. most popular this man terrified the FBI hmm these are all pretty fucking long can't click links godspeed just tell me what it's called but that doesn't sound very fun to be honest just an old cartoon intro not twitch safe This shit's not Twitch safe. Okay. That's fine. And we'll do something else. No, I don't like Arcade Craniacs. Holy shit. <clears throat> it is safe. I'm getting mixed reviews. Okay, how about this? Top three stories that it sound fake but are real. Sometimes the truth is stranger than fiction. And today we're going to look at three stories that demonstrate that. But before we get into today's stories, if you're a fan of the strange, dark, and mysterious... In May of 2011, 27-year-old Mikalina Lewandowska was surprised when she got a text message from her on-again, off-again boyfriend, 27-year-old Marcin Kasperzak. The pair had That's actually a hard previously name been to remember. engaged and had a three-year-old son together, but they just could never seem to make it work for longer than a couple of months at a time. In the text message, Marcin was asking Mikalina if he could take her shopping, something he knew she liked to do. As for Mikalina, lately she had been turning down requests like this one from Marcin, and she was in 
of these are fake. First, no, but they're 100% but their real. Their son was already being looked after by you her must mother, have missed that part. and Michalina didn't have plans that day, and so she thought, you know what? What the heck? And so she said yes. So Michalina took a shower and got ready, and even put on her engagement ring that Marcin had given her, and then she waited by the door. A little while later, Marcin, who was an aspiring bodybuilder who had become addicted to taking steroids, nice. showed up at her Huddersfield, England home. Michalina opened the door, Marcin came inside, oh. and then as soon as the door shut behind him, he tased Michalina, he jumped on top of her, and then he bound and gagged her. And then once she was restrained on the ground with no idea what was going on, I didn't expect Marcin this. opened the front door and waved down to his car that was parked on the curb, and one of his friends, this 18-year-old named Patrick, came out and walked up to the house and came inside. And then Patrick and Marcin worked together to cram Michalina into this small, rugged cardboard box, and then once she was forced inside of there, they closed it up, taped yeah, it I know shut, Atrocity and guy. then brought the box down to the front Probably of the house and put it into Marcin's trunk. And then Marcin and Patrick... Well, this isn't very fun at all. ...the car and drove off. Once they reached the outskirts of town, they parked in a parking lot right next to this huge forest. And from there, they took the box with Michalina inside of it and two shovels and walked into the woods and... It okay, I don't know why you recommended that. That's not very fun. Thanks to the bits fiends. What do you mean wheel of time? I don't know what that is. Top three PGO pros? What? I don't know what that means. PGO toes? Aussie man reviews. Uh, I only really make exception for popular YouTube channels when it's shit like video essays and things. I like Aussie man reviews, but that's not really what we're looking for at all. No, we're not doing Darman tonight, Jesus Christ. 1904 Marathon. Um, is, it, is it actually just a marathon? Rat Poison and Brandy, the 1904 St. Louis Olympic Marathon. The first modern Olympic marathon ended here, in Athens Panathenaic Stadium. An architectural wonder built entirely of marble nearly 2,000 years ago. Marble! The Fuck second yeah. marathon began in the Bois de Boulogne Thanks and wound through the streets spot. of Paris, the city of light. And the third Olympic marathon happened here, right outside this cheesecake factory. A Dillard's, a Five Guys, and a Nordstrom hold watch over this marathon's path. Its route is drenched in the shadow of a crate and barrel. The 1904 St. Louis Olympic marathon was a disaster. It was a story of fraud. Damn, he's coming in hot. Raw eggs, rat poison, food poisoning, liquor, feral dogs, and at least three separate incidents of near death. Wow. It was the stupidest sporting event of all time. Bold claim. Very bold claim. Thank you, Prime. Artifact and resub me. This is intense. Thanks, hey, Risa Max. Wow. That intro was nutty. Hey, John. Hello. I bought you a present. Thanks, John. Go on. Open it. No, no, I, I couldn't. Why won't you open it? Oh, right. I'm so sorry. I'll do it. Look, 
It's a board game. Yeah! The 1904 St. Yeah. Louis Marathon. It was very expensive. I bought it at this store. Oh, goodness, that, that's rude of me. I'm sorry. Would you like to play? Yeah, let's play. I guess that's the board. Uh, some eggs, a couple of apples, a couple of bottles of brandy. Oh, here's the rule book. How to play. Yeah, what are the rules for marathons this is anyway? Quite a bit of effort okay, here. You know what? Uh, a lot of arts and crafts. Oh, hey, looks like they threw in a couple expansion decks. Lucky us. Good ideas expansion deck. Let's see. Safety, sportsmanship, proper hydration, sobriety. We're not going to need any of these. 1904 Olympics. Oh, well, yeah, let's see what these Olympics were all about. Four months long? Quite sub... Quite sub what? Oh, my God. You know what? Let's not use those. If you want to read more about that, I'll send you some links when we're done. Cool? All right. Cool. This is All right, let's bust pretty intense. This, this was the route of the 1904 Olympic Marathon. These streets still exist in suburban some beanie babies today, most of them with the same names. The runners ran a I few laps around the track Francis Field, then out onto Forsyth, south on Merrimack and Brentwood, west on Manchester, north on Ballas Road, east on Clayton, north on what is now Lindbergh Boulevard, <clears> east on Olive, <throat> south on North and South, and then back on Forsyth to cross the finish line back at Francis Field. Or at least, that was the plan. Across the entire history of the Men's Olympic Marathon, 1,421 runners have finished with a time they bothered to record. The Can representative on this bar ranked from best time to worst time. The champion of this 1904 marathon ranks here. Just consider how absurd mm. that is. The guy who won this marathon was slower than 98% of the finishers of every other marathon. In fact, he was really slow. These are the finish times of every Olympic marathon champion. These days, they usually take somewhere between 2 hours 15 minutes. Older marathons took longer, but not nearly as long tunnel. to decide as the 1904 marathon, which was nearly a half hour longer than every other marathon on record. Now, every marathon has its share of dropouts. Usually about 75 to 80 percent of runners slated for a marathon actually finish it. In 1904, 41 runners were entered into the marathon. Nine didn't show up. Only 14 actually finished. That's a finish rate of just 34%. Pretty good. From the outset, John Lorden seemed like a favorite. He won the Boston Marathon a year prior and was considered one of the best distance runners in the world. Well, he made it about here. And then he started vomiting profusely. And then he quit. Oh, John. Two blocks. He made it two blocks. How is that possible? How did the, the Boston old. Marathon champion bite it after four laps around a track and two blocks of jogging? What made this race so awful? The answer was a seemingly endless number of things, but I'll stop at five. Oh! First off, it was... They were lighting off. the contestants on fire? I'm taking this from a paper published by Dr. Bill Roberts. He's a marathon director, and he contends that the ideal marathon temperature is 45 to 50 degrees Fahrenheit at the start of the race. Above that, dropouts and health issues increase. Dr. Roberts recommends that if the apparent temperature is 70 or warmer at the start of a marathon, you should maybe think about postponing that marathon. The temperature in St. Louis that day was recorded at 90 degrees. Oh, shade, baby. But along that route, there was almost no shade. In the sunlight, the temperature was probably closer to 100 or what 105 the fuck? degrees. That's not even taking the humidity into account. And as any Missourian will tell you, it can get humid as all hell. So clearly, they had to keep the runners hydrated. They didn't. According to most sources I'm relying on, there was only one water source. A well about 12 miles in. Hey, it's pretty good, though. As for that well, well, it was a well. From the account of Charles J.P. Lucas, remember that name, by the way, the visiting athletes were not accustomed to the water, and as a consequence, many suffered from intestinal disorders. <laughs> so there's one water source, and it gives you butt problems. And that's it. Fuck yeah, it's the like the origin miles, trail. You're on your own. About 19 miles in, American runner William Garcia was found lying on the side of the road, coughing up blood. If a passing car oh, hadn't boy. found him, he probably would have died. But not because of dehydration, and at least not directly. See, Garcia wasn't running on pavement. These were mostly dirt roads that were described in at least one account as inches deep in dust. They weren't really meant for cars, but cars were driving on them anyway. They were driven by the race officials and trainers, and they didn't give the runners a lot of space. Their tires would kick up these massive clouds of dust that blinded and choked the runners. Garcia had swallowed so much dust that it effectively sanded the membrane off the inside of his stomach. What? It caused massive hemorrhaging. He almost bled to death. And when the route wasn't covered in dust, it was full no, of Some parts of the course were just covered in broken, jagged stones for runners to tiptoe through in basic turn-of-the-century footwear. If they even had footwear, which Lin Tanyane and John Masciane didn't. 
These two were the first African competitors in any event in the history of the Olympic Games. They were veterans of the Second Boer War who were only in St. Louis in the first place as war reenactors. All right, so let's back up just a little bit. Oh the 1904 my Olympics God. were originally awarded to Chicago. The St. Louis World's Fair was scheduled for 1903 to celebrate the 100-year anniversary of the Louisiana Purchase, but they couldn't get it together and they had to push it back to 1904. So that meant two international events in the same region at the same time. That competition for spectators was bad news for both events. After a lot of political wrangling, St. Louis effectively stole the Olympics from Chicago and reduced it to a sideshow of the World's Fair, which was itself essentially a giant celebration of imperialism and racism that is beyond the scope of this video. Among the events were reenactments of battles from the Second yeah, I've seen the War Concordia. That were put on by 600 actual Thanks soldiers who rain. actually fought on both sides of the actual Boer War, which seems kind of gross to me, but then again, so do most of the things I'm talking about here. Anyway, the St. Louis Olympics were stupid and the rest of the world didn't really care about them. The president of the <laughs> Olympic Committee didn't even bother showing up. Only 14 countries sent any athletes to America. This marathon really needed participants, so Tanyane and Mashiane signed up. They both finished. Tanyane was chased about a mile off course by a couple of wild dogs. He what? finished ninth. What? So, to recap, 100 degree heat. Near complete lack of water, Holy suffocating shit. dust that almost killed a man, terrible terrain, and feral dogs. And let's add one more hazard for Felix Carvajal. He was wearing street clothes. Get ready to meet your new hero. Felix de la Caridad oh, Carvajal this guy's cool. Isolo right. was in. a mailman from Cuba. He had never run a marathon, he had never run competitively, the Cuban Olympic Committee did not invite him, and he didn't have enough money to get himself to the Olympics. This dude that fucks, though. Carbajal, who raised money by putting on running exhibitions, which I guess is just running for tips. According to one source, he actually ran the entire 700-mile length of Cuba. After a while, he raised the money he needed, and he took a boat to New Orleans, where he promptly lost all his money in a craps game. Oh, He rough. was broke. That'll St. do it. St. Louis was another 700 miles away. Some of the way he hitchhiked or stowed away on a train car, some of the way he just ran. And when he finally showed up at Francis Field that day, he looked like... Well, look. Look how everyone else is dressed. Sleeveless shirts, shorts without belts, athletic shoes, you know, the kind of stuff you'd wear if you were about to run a 100-degree marathon. Yeah, but this guy is looking Felix fucking awesome. Thing in a baggy long sleeve shirt, street shoes, a belt, a beret, long johns, and heavy shorts. And even those weren't originally shorts. Carvajal actually wore long pants on top of his long johns to the race, but another runner saw him and said, hey, nope, you're not running in these. He got some scissors and cut him off at the knees. You and ruined his style. His, his swag. was all he had. Okay, listen. I'm going to tell you this part of the story even though I don't think it's true. For two reasons. The first being that it's hilarious and the second being that Smithsonian's website claims that it's true. So did Marathon and Beyond magazine. So did a couple other sources I read. I just... It, it can't have happened. It's too stupid. The story goes that the peaches Mr. Carvajal stole weren't enough for him and he was still hungry. At one point he stumbled upon an apple orchard. He picked a couple apples and he ate them. Turned out those apples were rotten. He got a stomach ache, lied down, and took a nap. After a while, he got up, started running again, and finished in fourth place. To recap, a Boston Marathon champion quits this race after a few blocks. A mailman from Cuba in a beret and long johns who had never run a professional race and wasn't even invited and took a nap in the middle of the marathon finished fourth. He so just sounds like a natural athlete. The story of the 1904 St. Louis Olympic Marathon. I thought it was going to be a lot wilder. I'm just kidding, it gets way stupid. Turns out the but apples were laced with C4. Time. He would later win the 1905 Boston Marathon, but this is the race he's remembered for. Without adequate water supply, lots of the runners are suffering from severe cramps, and Lors is one of them. Nine miles in, he throws in the towel, and one of the cars gives him a ride. Coward. Meanwhile, at the 16-mile mark, Thomas Hicks has built a considerable lead. Oh, but the car blows up, doesn't he's it? beginning to fall apart. He's completely dehydrated. Just behind him, his trainers are trailing him in an automobile. This is Charles J.P. Lucas, one of the trainers in the car. He wrote a book about the race that has proven to be a very valuable account. He was also a giant idiot. Oh, rough. A little over halfway through the course, Hicks is begging Lucas for a drink of water. Lucas won't let him drink any, but he does offer to sponge out his mouth with water for some reason, and he also pours some water over him. What? And then he feeds him some egg white. And then he feeds him rat poison. Whoa. Again from what? Book. And then the author was forced to administer 1 60th grain of sulfate of strychnine. 
Okay, everyone, I think we probably better get a smart person on the phone. What? Dr. Sidney McElroy is the co-host of Sawbones, a podcast about the horrors of old-timey medicine. Did it turn him into a superhero? So if there's anyone to ask about Strict 9, it's probably her. Thanks, Strict Risa, Ian, and the Prime right? Mr. Sauce. Generally Glad speaking, like yes. Ranch boy. I, I mean, we, I certainly would not prescribe Strict 9 to somebody. I mean, if you take too much, it'll kill you. I mean, that's the bad thing about Strict 9. It's like a, like a really super-powered bad caffeine. What does it do if you take too much? They had that in so 1904. It blocks glycine receptors, and glycine is kind of what stops things. So once, once a nerve starts firing for us to move or do something, glycine stops that action. So if you block glycine, you're you're kind of turning off the off switch, so to speak. So you can't turn off. A little bit of that might make you better at running, a, say, a marathon. A lot of that would cause the prime God very speed. violent, uh, nonstop muscle contractions all over your body. If you've ever seen like classic paintings of people with tetanus in that arched position, it's the same kind of thing, like this awful arched position of your back that you would get stuck in and then eventually you would stop breathing and die. It would be a horrible way to go. Well, I've never seen that before. I was going okay, to holy shit. It turns you into a... You? I actually don't even think like a footstool <laughs> looking thing? <laughs> I think that's a. I think that's the better plan. What the fuck? Meanwhile, Fred Lores, who quit the race due to dehydration, is about 10 miles into his car ride home when the car breaks down. It's hot, and the sun is beating down, and Lawrence sees no point in just standing around for hours waiting for help. Plus, he's starting to feel better, so he decides to get on his feet and start running again. At the 20 mile mark, Hicks is falling apart. His skin is described as ashen pale. He's given more strychnine, and a couple more eggs. And now Lucas decides to give him brandy, too. That's, that'll In definitely book, help. Lucas calls brandy a stimulant, which it is definitely not. He's giving his runner rat poison and brandy and raw eggs and sponging his mouth out with water and dumping water on his head, but he won't actually let his marathon runner drink water. Charles J.P. Lucas is the worst coach in the history of the world. I could probably agree with that. These are fucking 5k bits again, Red. Thank you, man. And of course I've seen that video. That's an old popular one. Hope you've been doing well, Red. At this point, Hicks is begging Lucas to let him lie down, and Lucas is like, nope, keep going. And then Fred Lords gallops past him, looking almost impossibly good for someone 20 miles into a marathon. Hicks sees him, and his morale is destroyed. It looks like he might quit at any second. Thankfully, they learn that Lords is actually out of the race, so Hicks puts his chin back up and he starts to jog again. Hicks is still in the lead with one mile to go, again from Lucas. His eyes were dull, lusterless, the ashen color of his face and skin had deepened. His arms appeared as weights well tied down. He could scarcely lift his legs, while his knees were almost stiff. In addition to two doses of strychnine, Hicks has now finished his entire canteen of brandy, so a friendly bystander gives him more brandy. Oh my god! He's losing it. Even though he's only one mile what from the What the fuck? Line, Hicks keeps hallucinating that he's still 20 miles out. He won't stop asking for food, and he's still begging for water. The answer from his trainers is still no. It's a miracle he's even standing. At this point, Lucas and another kid are weakened at burning him or helping him around, half carrying him. Hicks finally staggers down the last hill and into the stadium, just in time to see officials prepare to present the trophy to Fred Lores. No, Fred! You son of a bitch! See, a marathon is a particularly weird thing to officiate Thanks, and spectate Bruce. prior to the advent of radio. Thank you for the anonymous 50. I really cars. appreciate I mean, it. These people in the stadium saw a bunch of dudes run away, and then they sat around for three and a half hours, and then they saw one of the dudes run back in. That dude was Fred Lors, and the crowd went nuts for him. He could have mentioned to somebody that he actually quit the race and rode half the course in a car, but he didn't. He just kind of let everyone think he won. When Hicks' team pitched a fit, Lors readily admitted, Oh yeah, I cheated. I was just messing with everybody. <laughs> I just thought the whole thing was funny. Lors accepted his disqualification and a lifetime ban that was rescinded a few months later. And that enabled Olympic officials to rightly well, present the winner's trophy to an almost dead, drunk, rat-poisoned man who probably had no idea what was going on. The second Hicks crossed the finish line, he literally fell into the arms of his manager. He was too weak to accept the trophy. 
They loaded him into a car and took him straight to the hospital. He looks good. Over the course of a three-hour, twenty-eight-minute, kind of like a second marathon run, Thomas Hicks had lost eight pounds. So you know how there was only one source of water. There's a prime gulp. Do you want to know why there was only one source of water? Okay, I'm going to read this off the screen. I want to make sure I get it exactly right. Uh, James Edward Sullivan was an Olympic yes, I've seen official. It. He was later named the secretary of the U.S. Olympic Committee, and today he's in the National Track and Field Hall of Fame. That's James Sullivan. I'm going to read you a slight paraphrase from a book titled The 1904 Anthropology Days and Olympic Games. To test his more radical ideas, Sullivan and several personal trainers chose the marathon. The marathon thus serves as an excellent and infamous example of Sullivan's combination of flawed science and dubious comparisons. Sullivan provided only one official water stop to minimize fluid intake to test how far purposeful dehydration could be taken. Wow, he used the Olympic what a hero. Marathon as an experiment. He Exit denied marathon one, runners water and subjected them to life-threatening conditions because he wanted to see what would happen. So fucking pissed off. Well, you were didn't run it. In his big cool you don't need experiment. to be mad. He's just a they didn't even know mad it. scientist. What an asshole. What a stupid asshole. Thomas Hicks gave every scrap of effort his body could muster in the service of the world's stupidest sporting event. It didn't deserve his sacrifice. Or Carvajal's, or Garcia's, or anyone else's. This was only the third modern Olympics, long before the Olympiad became the behemoth it is today. The prize they gave everything for was to have your name printed in small type in a table on a page of a dusty old book that was closed yeah. in the dark and perhaps opened out of curiosity long after you're gone. All these people are gone. Everyone who saw them is I gone. Appreciate it. The Thank wretched you, earth they ran on is gone. It's all asphalt. I grew up in suburbs like this one, in Kansas, Georgia, Kentucky. Places so ordinary that ghosts don't even. Live Maybe there. I'll do it again, dude. Streets so normal, Thanks so full thing. of TJ Maxx's and Starbucks that they play this trick on you, like nothing of any real importance could ever have happened there. That's a running shoe store, Missouri Running Company. Google tells me you can't make that up. Nice, we should do right there on the marathon route. Lynn Tanyane and John Masciani and Felix Carvajal really could have used this back then. I wonder if these people have any idea. Probably not. It's over a hundred years ago. That guy fucking is the king though. Should have given him the trophy. I already said that. We did very well in Vault of Glass. One of the best teams to run it, I'd argue. That was interesting. And now no one really gives that much of a fuck. I am curious. How many of you in here watch the Winter Olympics? Do we have any Winter Olympics fans in here? I was t I've talked about this like at least every single time the Winter Olympics come back around. It's pretty even between no's and yeses. I feel like nobody at all gives a fuck about the Winter Olympics. I When Andrew and I used to climb every couple days, uh, I remember during the Winter Olympics, we, had, we went to a bar and it had it on. Nobody... There's like no way people watch that. They had some of the dumbest fucking sports, most famously, of course, curling. But like the speed skating is so weird. They also had, um, oh God, what was it? It was like some fucking unholy fusion dance of skiing and shuffleboard. No, not shuffleboard. I, I'm getting it mixed up with curling now. I'm conflating two different ones. They have the dumbest sports is what I'm saying. They have like some really fucking dumb sports in the Winter Olympics. Curling's the thing where they like take a broom and they like brush off the thing while one guy throws a, a pot and... <laughs> Tries to get it in the middle.
Thanks to the resub Grim and the Prime Serpent and the resub Sunny. Don't do much in the Prime Cruzan and the Prime uh, resub Provo. I'm pretty sure America is actually the best curling team in the world. Uh, I think we always get the gold medal in curling. Let's see. No. Canada got the gold medal in 2018. Canada is really well with curling. Damn. Canada pops off. It's between Canada and Sweden for the gold medal in, swir in curling. Canada's got two golds. Sweden's got two golds. They just go back and forth. Yeah, curling is this weird sport. I wonder if it even comes up if I type this. Yeah, there we go. The U.S. men have defined this contest in N3. Schuster stays hot. The United States gets its deuce to tie it up. Very important shot. And a four-game win streak. They've given nothing more than a two to one of their foes, and only two of those. To be right on yeah, let's go! What a great shot. Shot stolen and very difficult to remove. Yeah, like the... I, I really feel like no one actually watches the Winter Olympics. But I guess I could be wrong, and I just live in a bubble that no one I know watches it. Damn, that guy is super American looking. coming in as one of the pre-tournament favorites. How about that? That one spot on. Looks like David Harbour or Arbor, the guy from Stranger Things. Thanks to the big 20, Stephen. Dear David. You want me to watch Sniper Wolf's telling of this? It's a spooky ghost story that's unexplained. I'm going to tell you right now. It's probably explained. Uh, it, I, I don't think this is a an actual ghost. Thanks to the resub Overlord and Tuna and Ninja. And I've already seen that, Sean. <clears throat> it's fucking stupid. Well, let's see. Opie the pirate. Just over a week ago, the internet became fascinated with something rather strange that was unfolding on Twitter. A writer and illustrator by the name of Adam. Ellis oh my fucking god! I remember this. The spirit of a dead child. The following is his story. Oh Jesus Christ! My apartment is currently being haunted by the ghost of a dead child, and he's trying to kill me. He started appearing in dreams, but I think he's crossed over into the real world now. Thanks to the resub, you boy circle. The first time I saw him, I was experiencing sleep paralysis and saw a child sitting in the green rocking chair at the foot of my bed. He had a huge misshapen head that was dented on one side. I did my best to draw it. I'm gonna tell you, the explanation is it's bullshit. Me, <laughs> what do you mean? Then he got out of the chair and started shambling towards the bed. I couldn't move because I was paralyzed. I have sleep paralysis fairly often, and it sucks. Right before he reached my bed, I woke up screaming. I had another dream a few nights later where I was in a library and a girl came up to me and said, You've seen Dear David, haven't you? I asked, Who? And she said, Dear David. Thanks the resub that one zone. Him. She continued, He's dead. He only appears at midnight, and you can ask him two questions if he said Dear David first. Then she added, But never try to ask him a third question, or he'll kill you. <laughs> then David came back in another dream. Okay. Same situation. I was in bed, and he was sitting at the rocking chair near the window. 
staring at me. In the dream, I say, Dear David, how did you die? He mumbles, An accident in a store. Be more specific, asshole. Dear David, what happened in the store? Yeah, good question. He groans. A shelf was pushed on my head. Wow, I'm frozen boy. with fear. I ask, Three me? questions! Adam! An answer. Adam! I realize that I've asked no! the question I'm not supposed to do. At that point, I wake up absolutely terrified. Over the next couple days, I googled deaths in the city, but I, give some Meldrum, I can't find sub nanometer. a kid named David dying in a store. I even tried different names. Daniel, Dylan, Devin. Nothing. A few weeks go by without incident. Sort of randomly, the apartment above mine is vacated and I have the opportunity to move into it. It's a larger apartment, so I'm thrilled. Another month or two. I goes appreciate by, that. Thank you, Nats. Oh. I sort of forget about dear David. Thank you the twenty five gift subs, Renning Gaz. Because I moved upstairs. Jesus, thank you, Renning Gaz. Lately something strange has happened. Really appreciate it. For the past four nights, my cats gather at the front door at exactly midnight and just stare at it. Oh god. Almost like something is on the other side. Last night, I got a weird feeling and looked out the peephole, and I'm dead certain I saw movement on the other side. When I opened the door and turned on the hall light, nothing was there, but but my cat seemed unnerved. Bushy tails, etc. And that's where I am right now. Dear David found me, I think. I don't know what to do, but... Well, you already know his weakness. It's shelves. Push a shelf on him. For the sixth night he literally the night, told you how to beat him. has walked over to the door promptly at midnight and stared at it. What is going on? Thanks, you said retro. Oh, this is very peculiar. It must be a child on the other side of that door that's haunting the apartment complex. That's the only explanation for this weird behavior from the cat. Okay, so I took a photo through the peephole because I'm too scared to open the door. Thanks to tier one, I Meldrum. I feel like I saw something. I couldn't tell, right so inside? I mustered up the courage okay. to open the door. Nothing was out there, but I took another photo. Look at this. Is it just me, or is there something in the first photo right where the banister meets the shelves, hiding in the stairs? I wasn't sure if it was a smudge or something like that, so I took a second photo from inside. Oh no. There was something out there. I dead bolted the door and got in bed because I don't know what else to do. <laughs> okay, your cat's I got laser eyes. Cat meowing at the door. That should be the primary concern. I'm scared. This initial thread was posted between August 7th and August 8th, and on the next day, August 9th, Adam posted the following. Good morning. I thought I'd clarify a couple things for new followers. First of all, I am alive. This is Secondly, tier one, I've Mista tested the apartment the prime for carbon BG. monoxide, so I know I'm not being slowly poisoned. Last, I do have a book coming out next year, but it has nothing to do with Oh, that's weird. This isn't viral marketing, it's just a book of funny comics. So I hope that clears things up. I'll keep you all updated should more weird stuff occur. Later, Adam returns again, this time saying he's downloaded a Sleep Talk app to see if he can manage to record anything strange. He's he also Jacob. posts yet another picture of his cats monitoring the door, which he says has become routine at this point. The next morning on August 10th, David says that the sleep app picked up way too much noise the night before, and that he was going to try playing with the settings to see if it would help. Later that night, he posts more pictures and videos of his cats at the door just before midnight, as expected. August 11th. We're once again given more updates from Adam. I used a sound app to record my apartment last night. It makes individual recordings each time it hears something. There were 33 recordings. Is this David farting into Most it? Most of them are pretty vague. A couple of them are passing cars and such, but there are three that I'm actually interested in. The first one is a snapping sound and what seems like a single step. Thanks to the gifts of newbie. It's odd because 
I didn't get out of bed all night. Now what the fuck is that? This one is weird because out of 33 recordings, this is the only one that has that strange electric sound throughout. Holy shit. Emperor Palpatine's in his living room shooting lightning. There's the prime this velocity. This follows the electric static. Another snap and then I groan in my sleep. <laughs> These happen between 2 to 3 in the morning. I have no explanation for them. I'll keep recording and share if I find anything curious. After this, Adam posts a few tweets saying that he's going to be out of town for the weekend and that in the meantime he's gathered up supplies for when he returns. Things like sage, stones, and a Ouija board. That ought to help. <laughs> August 13th. Adam has returned home and begins updating us once again. So, a weird thing just happened. Take it with a grain of salt. I bought a Polaroid camera this week. Perhaps it was the cats. fun and dorky, and I decided to take a few photos around my apartment. Polaroids are stupid and fun and inherently sort of creepy. Exit tier one faded. I didn't expect to find anything, and for the most part, I... That's I so didn't. sweet. I took a couple of my living room... Hope you and Danielle bedroom. are happy. That's the rocking chair where I first saw David. They're pretty unremarkable. Then I went into the hallway and snapped a photo. The what is this soundtrack? Feet just black. feet stomping? I even ripped open and destroyed a fresh pack just to see if it was an undeveloped Polaroid, but they start out white. I also thought that maybe I accidentally covered the lens with my finger... Jesus, what the fuck? Why is that background music so loud? It's just stomping. Or so, I took a photo while intentionally covering it. The photo on the left is me covering the lens with my finger. The one on the right is my fully lit hallway taken just after midnight. Okay, so one last thing because I wanted to double check. Here's a couple of videos of me taking the photos. Okay, here's my living room. Actually, give the sub dev. The hallway. Just just subvert. To show you what that's like. That was a good opportunity to jump scare there, Adam. You fucked up. And as you can see, the first one has already developed. Let's see what this one does. It's gonna take a minute. No rush, no rush. But it is developing. Oh my fucking god. How is that possible? So, I don't know. Broken camera? Okay, Jesus Christ. I, I, I don't know why I have to explain it. Adam tries taking another Look. picture of the hallway. I'm assuming- I, I don't know that I'd have to look at the Polaroid. Finger over the lens. It's, it's, it's not deeper than that. It's not a broken camera. It's, it's pretty simple. There, you know what, where is the lens? Maybe, maybe, maybe that's not it. Maybe it really is haunted. Ah, nope. <laughs> Interesting. So it's right here, and his finger's kind of in that area. Probably just a coincidence.
and I decided to take a few photos around. You see the first. Well, let's double check though. It's, uh, it's about where it would be. Finger bent. It'd be probably just far enough to get over there. He never shows the front of the camera. Yeah, I mean, I guess he could tape it. Oh, you're right. The lens does pop out. Does that change anything? It's not that far. All it would change is up here, right? So instead of being like this, it'd be like this. I think it just makes it easier. As you can see, the first one has already developed. So let's see what this one does. Thanks to the resub, Aachen and unbolted. The button to take the photos is on the front though. Jesus, all right. Someone give me the anatomy of the camera. I'll figure it out. This is the button you use to take? Is this it? You press this button to take a photo? Okay. So let's just assume it's curled up and bent in. All right, then yeah, it's tape on the lens. Unless he's using his middle finger, which I can't see. He could be doing this kind of maneuver. But that seems like more effort than just putting tape on it. I can assure you it's not an actual haunted hallway. Adam tries taking another picture of the hallway just to make sure, and according to him, it came out black yet again. Honestly, I don't know why I'm still fucking around with this camera. There might be a logical explanation. Please reset DX. Someone told me to take photos from farther away, so I tried that. Once with my iPhone, and once with the Polaroid. Left is with my phone, right is with Polaroid. The hall light was on both times. Why is it pitch black each time with the Polaroid? Wow. Mystical properties of the Polaroid. August 14th. <laughs> Adam posts images of himself using the sage he ordered to cleanse his apartment, making sure not to miss the hallway and rocking chair. He updates us a few more times saying that the sage doesn't seem to help and that he barely slept the night before and said that he kept waking up feeling like something was wrong. Thanks the resub, Oso. August 15th. Sage didn't work. I haven't dreamed about David in a few months, but he appeared again last night. In the dream, my bedroom was filled with hazy smoke, but I could see David sitting on the chair across the room. He was smaller this time, almost shrunken. Oh, he's getting less powerful. He didn't do anything except look at me. Anyway, Thanks, I, said bar none. I feel like it's a bad omen. And he Tori. August Meldrum. Apparently strange faces have been showing up in some of the photos I take. A couple people have pointed this out, which I don't have a real explanation for. There's also this, which seems less weird, but still odd that it resembles David. Oh my fucking god! Do what you will. The second one doesn't alarm me so much, since it seems like it might just be a reflection. But that first one gives me the creeps. It's David! At the time of recording this video, these are the last updates we received from Adam. If you look at everything oh he's posted, Is he dead? much of it can be easily debunked, but maybe that doesn't make it any less eerie. What, Given why? the technology we have these days, we're actually able to sit in and view these events as they supposedly unfold. As for what'll happen next, we're just going to have to wait and what see. What was his name, goddammit? What was it, like Adam Ellis? I'm still fucking around with Moby Dickhead. He deleted his account? Or maybe David deleted it for him.
And like I said, probably not on stream, Sean. No, 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 no. Just a coincidence, no. Surely he didn't actually delete his account. No one ever truly does. <clears throat> I'll just type in Dear David. It'll probably pop up. I don't know what I was thinking with that search. That was such a fucking dumb search. It's only tweets with people talking to people named David. Thanks to the resub, Sableye and Twisted Flames, the gift sub footstool. It's probably not the esports guy. Here he is. He lost his check mark. Damn, David stole his check mark and his soul. Rough. I guess David just worked for Twitter. <laughs> he said it was a fake story and people kept wanting updates and he had to say guys stop I made it up <clears throat> yeah that probably also wasn't good enough <clears throat> I'm sure witch talk was already coming up with reasons why it's actually real I, like I said, I think I'm going to start posting some shit like that on TikTok. See if it blows up the TikTok channel. Just garbage, fake shit like that. With, like, really minimal effort. Uh, I already thought of a good one. Like, at the warehouse, I'll just get, like, a little rocking chair. And I'll just push it one time at night and be like, oh my god, it's moving on its own. And that's the whole video. I'm sure they'd be like, oh my god, this is the scariest thing I've ever seen in my life. I know, bro. Today, Charlie bit my finger gets deleted. Alright, the egg thing was completely accidental, though. I didn't realize I was being fucking pranked, and I'd appreciate if you never bring up the egg incident again, if you don't mind. Have I seen the what? Knife Spinning World Championship? Uh, it sounds familiar. Oh, well, I'm not going back. I already got the end of the story, but thank you for the five, Steven. Yeah, maybe Tori. Number one. Oh, baby. Can't have the music play. Just some children spinning the old butterfly knives. Pretty nutty. I mean, they're not easy to maneuver. Who wins? Let's see the winning routine. Two actual kids. That's crazy for knife wielding and spinning. They must have really liked CSGO. Do they go head to head in a death match? Mm. 
Not impressive yet. So the whole routine? Oh, this guy's got it easy. <gasps> oh my god, get him get him out of here. What the fuck is this? What the, this is supposed to be the finals. It's the same move. Oh what the fuck? Are they even trying? Nice. Okay. How it's actually made chocolate by Hugbees. You realize Hugbees is Andrew from our podcast? From our 24 hour stream the other day? From our charity streams? Like, you do realize Hugbees is that same Andrew, right? I, I'm very familiar with, with Hugbees. Though it is really cute, though, that now people, like, Andrew's getting big enough to the point where people now know him from all of that more so. I'm glad to see him really start to blow up. Thanks to the bits Chuck needs bussy and music musical. He got big on TikTok. Oh, did he really? Hold on, I gotta see that. He doesn't have a TikTok account, but I know his content always gets jacked over there. Damn, you're right. Some of his how it's actually made it's kind of blow up on here. I wonder if he even knows. Nice. Exit tier one, Emma, Emma Marie and the Risa Dessert Dog and the Prime BDR and Zachary. Yeah, we, yeah, of course I remember the whole egg thing. <clears throat> Exit tier one, Shakes and Bakes. Can I watch Gordon Ramsay yelling at people? Uh, I mean, that's only fun in doses. I don't really feel like watching any Kitchen Nightmares or Hell's Kitchen, but thank you for the attention. I probably won't watch it live or anything boiling, but I will watch it after the fact. Thanks to the bits, Caden. I think I'm going to call it a night. I just noticed it's starting to get a little late. Thanks to Resub Ronaldo. Thanks everyone for tuning in. To everyone who donated, big thank you. New subs, welcome aboard. Sub means a lot, so thank you for subbing. Enjoy the emotes. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your evening. I'm going to toss you to Cannoli for tonight. I haven't seen him streaming in a little while. Oh, he's AFK. Nice. All right, well, thanks again, everyone. I really appreciate the generosity and have a great rest of the night. Take it easy. See ya.